Buenos días a todos. Pues eh, reanudamos el, la conferencia eh, ya en su último en su último día. Que... And today we are going to devote it to the case of the platforms of the interested parties in Spain and also very specifically in the Eurovision Authority. So, as the first uh, session of today, at half past nine, because we are starting really very punctual, we are on time, we are going to have a view of the participation in Spain of the management, of the hydro management. We have got the presence of a lecture for it who has got an overall view of this topic at this moment as sub-director or deputy director of planning in Spain. And he has seen that in a very specific way, in a, hydro, in a hydrographic, in a water basin, because he has been the boss uh, of planning in the Duero basin. So he has got a proven experience regarding the planning and participation of all the sectors involved in water, in the management of water. And this element of participation that we believe that it is essential. Uh, without planning, we are not going to have uh, any, any success. We have to know every sensitivity of every stakeholder, of every actor regarding the development, the sustainable development. So without any further ado, I'm going to give the floor to Victor Ake so that uh, we can have uh, a view of this participation of the water in Spain. And if you want to post any questions, we are going, out, we are going to open up this uh, round of questions. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, good morning to you all. Thank you very much indeed for having invited me to participate in this meeting. It is always for me a pleasure to come to Zaragoza and very especially to this water authority because I really started my professional career here some years ago. So I'm very thankful for this. And uh, as I have got the presentation, I'm really going to to Chen. Uh, is, it, is it going to be recorded? Have I got to use the microphone? Yes, you do. Okay, well, the development of the presentation I was going to do was going to comprehend those topics. So first of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about the management and planning of water in Spain as a presentation of the issue. Secondly, I wanted to talk about the configuration of a water authority, as this one for instance and the, part the regulated participation which is set up through certain bodies around which we have articulated the government, management, administration, planning through these water authorities, through these basin authorities, so the president, the board of governing, also the exploitation board, to the users group, uh, and the competent authorities. And then I would like to make reference to an upper consultancy body from the government, which is the National Council of Water. And they elaborate reports addressed to the government. And they have got this uh, upper character of this highest level, which are above this concept of this uh, basin body. And then I'm going to talk about another kind of public participation, more general, more open, which is the one accompanying the process of planning. And last but not least, I have got some conclusions, which are not really conclusions as such, because they are not derived from the things I'm telling, but they are a kind of final reflection for the participation which are really the fruit of things that I haven't really said, but at the end, I wanted to highlight them, really. Okay. In Spain, I think that there are people here 
from coming from different countries, but most of you, I think, you are Spanish. So in Spain, as you know, waters are public. We have got public waters in general. There are some exceptions, but waters are public, and the private use requires a concession, an administrative one. Apart from this, every action on the waters, on the public domain, the public domain, the water public domain, are the waters and also the channels, the water resources which are available for this resource and so on. So each action on this is subject to the water planning. So this administration and planning is performed in basins and the language of this framework directive in water is the one of this uh, uh, hydrographic regions. We have got 25 of them. We have got 25 water regions. And uh, really, or catchment areas. In each of them, there is an authority of the basin, a basin authority. And in the case of the catchments, which comprehend the territory of more than one autonomous communities, they have got the name of uh, water authorities. It is inherited from a structure which is almost 100 years old. These bodies of basins, the model of the Water Confederation, this drawing corresponds, I did it when I was in this uh, Duero Water Confederation, and I belong to that, but it almost replicates more or less any kind of uh, inter-community area basin body. And it is represented by this uh, yellow box we can see behind. There are there some technical services which are grouped in four administrative units. And there are a series of uh, bodies which are the ones articulated, where this, where this participation is articulated in a more regulatory way, which is a very big tradition. So all these things are addressed at a very high level by the chairman. Those are bodies which are really very presidential type or presidential life, because the chairman or president has got quite a lot of power. Right now, we are going to see each of these bodies, which is the function and how these things that we see up there, this is the general administration of the state, the local state, the autonomous communities, the users of different kinds, how they are organized, and how they become part of this uh, following uh, body. So I say, from the next presentations onwards, we are going to see each of these bodies. First of all, the president and the governing board are really the governing bodies. The president, traditionally, did have the category of general directors. It's a very important level. Nowadays, it is not the case. They have got the category of subdirector, and they were appointed by the government. It is forcing like this uh, in the water law. And right now, this uh, lowering of level of the general direction to the rank of subdirector. What we also do with a bigger alignment or parallelism with the general direction of water and with the central administration, they perform the directive and executive function of this body. And basically, they preside every body of the ones we are going to talk. And they perform different functions in the body. The governing board is the other governing organ, which is made up by representatives of the general administration of the states of users, the administration of the autonomous communities, and the law forces of the provinces. The only thing that happens is that this participation of the provinces in the governing boards is not materialized yet, and I don't think it is in any case in any of the confederations that right now have got their own governing board set up. The function of this governing board, let's say that it is essentially to control the actions, the performance of the body through an action plan that the board analyzes and approves, and together with this, the budget too. 
the own budget and you act, you render account of them, you account for them, and it has to be approved for the next year. This is the main function of this governing board. And there are also other functions such as to propose to the Water Council the review of the water plan and also other functions about the management of the public domain, which are very different, several of them. But uh, the main function is really to control the action of this body through an action plan and a strategic one, which is the one that has to be blessed by them. As uh, management bodies, I remark these exploitation boards and the users' uh, assemblies. These exploitation boards gather the users which are related in a system in order to coordinate the exploitation of the works and the using of the resources. Essentially, we are talking about users which are benefited from infrastructures which are built by the state. I say essentially, but not only. And from this moment onwards, the chairman within the system of exploitation either, go, or either goes to this uh, governing board and defines the scope that they have. But there is not really a strict parallelism between both of them, because within a system there could be many boards depending on the situation as it suits. And they function, they work out as a neighborhood a community of proprietors. They organize their own budget, expenditure, and so on. They are presided by the boards. It is the only case where the governor does not, uh, where the, the chairman does not direct them directly. And they integrate the users, understood, as I have said before, essentially, as users of systems that use regulated resources thanks to the government works, although we do not exclude the other ones, but they are simply represented depending on the kind they are, so suppliers, irrigation, the generation of energy, industry, and the different entities or bodies. So we really have got a certain figure of representatives depending on the number of hectares, power of installations. This is regulated in some norms. In some norms, which are a little bit old, which is the one of the public administration of water, the assembly of users gathers every member of this exploitation board. So it means if you haven't been able to be a member in this exploitation board, you do not have also the right to be in this assembly. They have got several functions analyzing the annual report of the body. They inform of the annual budgets and propose uh, solutions for the conflicts that could arise between one or more exploitation boards. And specifically, and I say specifically because apparently it is a minor function, but I think it is the main activity really of this user's assembly, which is to identify representatives of the user for the integration in the other bodies where the users are participating. This composition which appears uh, set up uh, in a regulatory way is derived from the fact that the users of the assembly depending on the kind of use and depending on different criteria of evaluation, they present a proposal that afterwards should be channelized for the representation of the users in other bodies. The commission, oh yeah, there are also other, there are also other bodies of work of many other kind of things, but one of the most relevant is the commission for the emptying of the reservoirs, which is also chaired by the president of the hydropower electric network in Spain. And their function is to deliberate and to obtain proposals from the chairman from the filling and emptying of the reservoirs and of the water resources of the body. At theoretically, they should meet at least twice a year, depending on the functionality of the accounts where irrigation is overwhelming or predominant, there is a meeting prior to the start of these irrigation campaigns and depending 
The Council of Water of the Catchment is the body described by the law as uh, of participation and planning. It is also chaired by the chairman. It has got also representatives of the general administration of the state of the, from the different ministries, also from the autonomous communities, and in a number that shouldn't be lower than the one of the general administration of the state, representatives of, of the local administrations and the users which shouldn't be lower than a third of the total. Moreover, there are representatives of the environmental, economic, and social interests in a number that shouldn't be lower than six. The functions of the Water Council are the one of fostering information, consultation, assessment, and active uh, participation in the planning. And they also invoke the government through the environmental ministry about this review of the basin and high and uh, water pa power plants and they have to receive an annual report in order to do this and they advise depending on the circumstances the review of the annual one and they are also empowered to perform uh, other actions regarding the protection of water and the best and the best management of the public domain and last within this uh, bodies linked to this basin authority. We have got the committee of the competent authorities, which is a cooperation body among administrations, among the competent authorities. So this means the authorities which are endowed with the competences to implement the measures that are taken, adopted essentially in this hydrologic plan. Here, the committee of competent authorities are not voting at all. What they are searching for is this coordination among administrations. Therefore, let's say that we are not searching from a, for a proportionality or a weight, and the users are not represented either, because really the function of this body is this cooperation among administrations. That's why. Essentially, the administrations are represented by a single representative. In the case of the autonomous communities, in the communities present in the basin, in the case of the general administration of the states, those representatives are from the different ministry departments who have got to do with the measurements adopted for the waters. And in the case of the local administration, there's a small number of representatives which are identified through the Spanish Federation of Municipalities and Provinces. As I said, their function is to foster cooperation among the different administrations and to launch, to push this measurement program accompanying this hydrologic program. This is really the key function. And they have also to supply the European Union through the ministry the information, the corresponding information about, about the catchment regarding the measures. This responsibility is located here because these authorities are the ones that somehow become responsible and are committed to do what the plan contains. Okay. Let's say that, that what we have seen are the bodies of the basin, but there's an upper organ of consultancy and participation, which is the National Council of Water. This National Council of Water, let's say, is a accessory, an assessment a consultancy body for the government. And I wanted to depict in this image, to reflect in this image, the process of finishing up uh, a hydrologic plan in the field of the confederation, so in the yellow one, the Council of Water of the Catchment is the one that finally, let's say, according to the Article 35 of our water law, they launch, they push the government uh, this uh, proposal of hydrologic plan through the environmental ministry, the hydrologic plan of basins is sanctioned by a royal decree, which apart from having the part of the approval as such, so this uh, sanction in this position, they also have got uh, as an annex, the text, uh, the regulatory text uh, of this hydrologic plan, because the hydrologic plan is more or less a minor and less regulation for the scope of the basin they are referring to. And for the time in the horizon, it has been built or designed. So let's say that this is a work of regulatory production. And this regula regulatory production 
when it comes to the government, it comes with a draft of a royal decree. And then the general, the technical general secretaries of the different departments, in our case of the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Environment, the companies that process, and in this process they have to perform several consultancies and procedures which are regulated in the government law, in the organic law of the State Council, and the law of the functioning of the general administration of the state. And one of the consultancies which has been forcing and is necessary is this upper one to the uh, general consultation, to the general body of water. There are also consultations in the government and also other ones which are addressed to the government and to the states. How is made up this National Council of Water? The minister is the chairman. According to the law, the environmental ministry, but really the ministry which has at the moment allocated the competencies regarding water, there are also representatives of general administration of the state, autonomous communities, local administrations, and the bodies, uh, the bodies of the basin through their chairman and different members of the Council of Water in the catchment. So they are really speakers in this National Council of Water, and then. There are also other professional and economic organizations, trade unions, entrepreneurial organizations, and NGOs defending the environmental interest. As I've said, this role of the National Council of Water as a consultant body has got different functions, but really the main one is the articulation in the regulation production, so the plans which at the end have to go to do with them and the general dispositions and regulatory dispositions and so on and so forth. Has tomado te con limón caliente o algo? Yeah, we have already seen these bodies which are interrelated and through them a participation takes place that we are going to say that it is regulated and in some cases, it is very traditional in Spain, and it has been functioning f for decades. But there are other mechanisms to participate which are more open and which are extended to the whole citizens. We try to extend them to, the whole, to, to all the citizens in order to make them involved in the decision-making process, which have got to do with the planning one. This process planning. Uh, I'm going to sum up. Uh, I'm going to sum it up here in these four axes and the slide. They are specified in the production of three documentary blocks, initial documents, a scheme of important topics, where it's identified which the big issues that have to be solved by the plan, and also this proposal of plan. These documents should be subject to a public open consultation for a period no less than, no smaller than six months. And apart from that, the analysis of the comments that have been received has to be assessed, evaluated, and this analysis must be integrated as an annex in the very own plan, independently on the fact that uh, corrections or improvement or agreements or enhancements fruits of these participations are integrated. The, or the ones which are considered to be convenient or necessary. But participation is not only the consultancy, but also the participation which accompanies the whole process. Usually, on regular regular basis, we have seen that it has been set up on three levels. I have represented them on these schemes, which is something useful too, and comes from the European guys of the, strat of the common strategy of implementation of the framework directive of water. The first level, which is the smallest one, because it means a level of lesser participation, it's the one of the supply of information. The information must be accessible to anyone. Information let's say not only the documents, but even the information used. What we try is to have a very strong transparency in the whole process. And in order to achieve this, we have found that a procedure, a very efficient procedure for it, and a low-cost one, are the websites. The websites of the basin 
bodies or authorities must present in an explicit, explanatory way all the contents of these hydrological plants. And this must be accessible to most part of the citizens. And the next level of participation is the one of consultation. It is not only that uh, I put information available for you, but I hope that you give me some feedback. So I'm giving you a document, and I hope that you give me some feedback about it. And moreover, I have to trust that uh, what you are telling me, uh, I'm going to inspect, I'm going to peruse what you are telling me, I'm going to tell you what I think about, and it can be the, or the origin of some amendments in the plan. And these levels of participation are compulsory at the moment. It is not something facultative to perform it or not, but there's a third level, which is the one of the active involvement. When I'm not saying that I give you a piece of paper for you to read and tell me what you think about it, but I have to tell you, we are working together, we are joining, joining efforts, and this level of involvement is much more difficult. It cannot be it cannot be demanded, but it is highly recommendable. Okay. In all the things I've reviewed quite quickly here, my aim has been to show two kinds of participation. One which is very regulated, traditional, and somehow restricted and another one which is more open on the one that we are going forward in the next years and where we have to obtain a opportunity of improvement, which is very important, I'd say. And last, I was going to give you these final reflections, which are not conclusions themselves because they are not derived from the things I'm telling, but uh, they are more or less they are going to deal with the things I haven't said, I have omitted, and I should say, first of all, I have to say that the regulatory participation in Spain has been consolidated for the case and is expanded to the public administrations and the users. The users understanding that are those who are integrated in these exploitation boards. This participation functions from the very beginning of the 20th century. But there is also a more open participation for the field of the planning, which is not so consolidated and not so regulated yet. And what is searching for is the involvement of the citizen in the decision-making process. And we have to see to what extent have we reached that. Third, there's something that I think that we should take into account, and it is that this participation, at this, as it has been forcing with this legal framework we've got, is not really guaranteeing transparency. It should do it. it. Seems that it should do, but it is not doing it. There are some organizations such as International Transparency, which every now and then publish their reports about transparency in these basic authorities and bodies. And I think that there has been an improvement which is remarkable, but there's still a long way to go within this framework. And I think that the quality of the participation and, so, and governance associated to it depends on a very high level of the will of the chairman, of the presidents of the basin, and especially of the directive group, of the leading group, because the chairman, well, I came here in 1987, and from that moment onwards, there have been many chairmen. But the staff of the Confederation hasn't changed, essentially. There are people who are still the same. And I think that this is the know-how or how things are done. Of course, the will of the chairman is very important because it can help or it can really delay or obstacle or minimize the transparency and participation. And last, I wanted to give you a message that from my point of view is an optimist one. I think that in the last decade we have gone really forward in the consideration of a customer as a client and not as a person who receives the services of the administration. From the administration, the citizens were seen from a hierarchical pyramid. He was at the basis of it, and we told him from here what he had to do, and the evolution has uh, being that right now we have become an organization which is rendering public services and we are paying attention to the petitions of the citizens. This home has nothing to do today with the things I saw in the year 19. 
87 things have changed radically but this does not mean either that there is still a very long way to go so just uh, thank you very much indeed and if you have got any questions i'm available for you i'll be glad to answer to them Thank you very much indeed, Victor, for your expert, for your presentation. Have you, you have got any questions or any remark or any petition of clarification? Uh, yes, please. We, we, we beg you to use the microphone, otherwise we cannot translate from the book. Thank you. Thank you, Victor, for your presentation. I wanted to pose a question about one of the topics you have uh, explained. Oh, so Maria Teresa Santos is my name, General Secretary of uh, this Ebro River Basin Authority. And I wanted to ask you, in one of the slides you have shown, you were talking about three levels of participation. And the last one, the one uh, regarding this active involvement, I do understand more or less the theory, but how can you really reflect that on, on reality? Perhaps this is a weird question, but how can we put it into practice? Thank you very much indeed. Okay, as I say, I think this is really the most difficult level. It is the most difficult level because it really demands a lot of time and it demands to meet a language with which you can understand the person who's talking to you because if we are working together and we are working on the hydrologic plan and uh, I put on the table the model and uh, I start with the environmental objectives and so on, we have got the danger, we are in risk that the person which is at the other part says, okay, what is he telling, telling me? Uh, he, I, I cannot understand anything and he's not perceiving my needs. What do we have to do with this active involvement? I'm not able to give any lessons, but what I can say is that what we have tried to do when I was at this uh, Duero Basin Authority and I was trying to search for solutions to some topics which could be conflictive ones. And it was where I especially searched for that uh, active involvement. Of course, the first thing is what I've said. We cannot improvise. I cannot suddenly say things are done and say, and say to someone, OK, let's gather and let's look for the solution for this. But this active involvement, what we did in this active involvement was to look for small groups of people which for a long time were knowing what we were doing and with whom uh, we were discussing. I didn't, I didn't go there with the model on the table, but what I did was to give them the tables of what it was, for instance, we have got Clemente Prieto. So from the very beginning of the plan, I gave them the figures of this uh, electrical power stations and then he told me you are wrong in the same figure in the same column of the last time so then we had got a certain trust and mutual understanding where we had an information which was really accurate and the irrigations professionals too i didn't go to, i didn't went to meet them with this graphic of the aqua tool but i just gave them the list of demands and then he told me well this demand is wrong and there was an information system in internet when you entered into it and you saw the unit of agricultural demand, the crops, uh, resources. So there was a kind. So at the end, what people did with the figures, really you wrap them in figures. But at the end, the result is what tells you, OK, it is colorful, but it does not float. This is not where it should be. And these are not the results we should have. So I think 
that this repetition, these frequent meetings, this fact of seeing that we are not hiding any data, that this is what we have and these are the results of them, and we are working on this in this way, and have a look at the model and to keep it for yourself. I think, I think this is this active involvement, and I say this active involvement cannot really be just a meeting of 300 people, or I've never been able to manage that. I've always preferred with few people. Hi, the hydrological, of course it has happened also in the hydrological plan, but especially in the hydroelectric one. And we had a very strong critique about it. So, from that moment onwards, then we achieved a result which was better I don't say, I'm not saying that they were really happy about it or that we did it very well, but of course it is much better what we had at the end than what we had at the very beginning, and this was due to this active involvement. And from my experience, as I said, the thing that functioned best were very small meetings with the same people for a long time. Because what you said before about the chairman, we have seen a lot, a lot, a lot of men, and general directors, and. Uh, Sub-directors where I am, I thought uh, really the, the, the average of, of someone in this position is two years and a half, but Clemente, I don't know how long he's been in Iberdrola, always the same person. You really have got a strategy, don't you? Yeah, I don't know. Or for instance, the people of Profesa, they do have a very good strategy. We don't. We don't have it. So, I think that it is very easy to identify to identify this, um, these skills in these things, because really we have to do the, ch the change. And after having discussed very often with the hydrological bodies about uh, indemnizations and rewards, uh, I said, oh, you have to burst into love because we are still able to go forward. And when we have reached an agreement, we are changed, and the new person have, has to start from scratch. So. Okay. Okay. I think I have to say something because I've been alluded many times. Well, I think in our Ebro River Basin, we are now in this phase of uh, active involvement. What I think it means is that everybody makes this plan their own. We have to involve the different sectors the uh, political representations, the users, that is to involve them in the sense that they make their contributions, that they will be in the plan uh, with their own initiatives, and I think this is very important. It is not about uh, making a proposal by the um, basin organization. It, is, it must be something that belongs to everybody, this is very important, and therefore, to get this involvement, we have to um, keep contact. Public information, uh, you present some documents by written, and I think this is not enough. We, it is necessary to have some direct contacts with the main mediators to take into account their needs, their criticisms, their comments, and with this purpose, we will involve these uh, actors or these stakeholders. Everybody has maximalistic pretensions, but through a good negotiation process that has to take place at different levels, even on a technical level, for example, at a technical level, we have to also connect with the different actors. actors. But the and the purpose of this action is to look for a balance because everybody has to yield and everybody has to win or to earn something. <coughs> and in this sense, we, the presidents uh, that uh, are very uh, short periods in our post, we, I think we are contributing some freshness, like a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Well, Victor, I just wanted to clarify things for our international public or audience. 
because when you are telling the Spanish model of uh, participatory management in the water sector, it is a very complex model. Maybe if we can tell a little bit about the evolution or the process of this model, maybe the other countries will understand that this is not this has not appeared just out of the blue. It is uh, something that has been generated for a long time, and maybe the primary core has to be explained, the uh, uh, dam emptying commissions, etc. Everything starts with a more simpler, a more a simpler idea, but then they get these things get complicated, and how to share costs, how to manage these dams. It is important to know that these are processes that they are not things that uh, start being so complicated as they are now. Uh, I would like you to explain a little bit the evolution of these basin organizations. Well, Josefina is right. This is the result of a dialogue over, that has been taking place over 100 years. Although the name of this house is the Ebro River Water Authority, it has changed a lot throughout the, its history. Up to 1985, where there was the Water Act, there was a, a kind of confederation and there was a water authority and there was also the water commissariat. There were two entities, two different bodies. The protection, the administration, the concessions and the rights of uh, proprietary use and the quality of waters did not, all these matters did not belong to the Ebro River Basin Authority or Water Authority. It was really an organization or a body to promote, to foster economy, really. That was uh, in the times of Franco. And normally we were having water policies such as uh, the ones in Mesopotamia in the olden times. Who were represented there? the ones putting the money that was the state and the users benefiting from these works. And this is the our inheritance. Afterwards, with the 1985 uh, Water Act, when the commissariats get together, although uh, plan planning in Spain is a very old one, we can even see some planning in the 19th century, a planning by basins, but it is also something that appears in the 1985 Water Act as well as water councils. And therefore, the decision-taking process has been changing lately. It is more or less like in a neighbor's community when they decide to paint the stairs, you know. Well, we are trying to integrate things that are not easy to integrate sometimes the traditional users have felt themselves excluded or uh, not enoughly or sufficiently represented. And there are some conflicts in this sense. Society has been digesting all this. But as Josefina says, it looks as if it were complicated now, but it has been little by little. It has been done little by little. We are a complicated country. I have to say we are complicated people. Yes, indeed, we are. I think this uh, debate could be taken for hours, could be prolonged for hours. But, of course, uh, you have many models, uh, simpler ones, more complex ones. Uh, the more participation, the more the complexity, or the higher the complexity, of course. Well, in any case, we have to stop now. Oh, no, Josefina is telling me something. 
Ah, th there is one question. Okay, I'm Eva Garcia, responsible of the environmental resources of Navarra. And I want to thank you for your words about participation. We have some experiences that I will have the chance to explain later on this morning. But socially, we are complex and we have to try to involve society. We have experiences that have been working well, small groups normally. But the important thing is how to give a continuity to all this. We are in a moment of planning where cooperation is, is there in the uh, active attitude, but we have to keep this attitude and we have to give it a continuity. This is our challenge. Thank you very much. Yes, it's true. You are right. If there are more questions, I don't want to stop. Well, if there are no more questions, following the program, now we have a presentation, photograph presentation of participated processes. Now. These are simply photographs of the um, illustrating the participatory process. Well, my name is Manuel Omedas. I'm the chief of the planning office of the Ebro River Water Authority, <coughs> or Ebro River Basin Authority. Before starting this uh, photo session, I am going to present a little bit the history of this house, of the Ebro River Basin Authority. I want you to see what is what a user's assembly is, how they are democratically chosen, um, how a dam emptying commission is composed. Uh, just, I just want you to see uh, our processes especially for the Peruvian delegation, the representative. The Peruvian representative, uh, I see she's uh, really interested in that because uh, they are now having a similar process. And the important thing is to interchange experiences here. This is the Ebro River Basin Authority. This is a fifth of the um, Spanish territory. And we normally say that this is a territory similar to Somalia, that is an arid territory, and the um, air and the water authority experiences are interested for those countries where water management is a limiting factor for their development. If water, without water in our region, we would be it's very similar to Somalia, the Somalia situation when there is a draft in Somalia, people have to really migrate in a very um, precarious way. And this is what happened at the beginning of the 20th century in Spain. The Basin Authority was created because we we were saying, let's make a public-private cooperation or collaboration with including the uh, water users and the civil society so that they both should uh, contribute their energy and the state would contribute their structure and their uh, economic resources so that with these two parts, we could have a territory to live in it. That was done in 1926. We created this uh, water plan or hydrological plan. That was the first idea in order to create this basin authority. We said, okay, let's see how these territories that are deserts, let's see how we can turn them into a territory where to live. This is a constant, this is the water plan from the beginning. It has endured for over a, almost a century. 
we consider it a very successful planning. Uh, okay, the results were not achieved in a decade, but we were giving it a continuity in our efforts, and we kept on uh, working on it, and we have succeeded into keeping the results. At the beginning of the 20th century, it was very difficult to live here, as you can see the photo. Through some agro-food production and energy production, there is there are more or less one million hectares uh, irrigation fields and 112 big dams. 112 big dams. Thanks to all these, we have turned the uh, Ebro axis into a large agro-food axis. Here, the along this axis, the third part of uh, meat is produced in Spain, and a little less than the third part of the energy production and hydroelectrical production of the country is produced. Um, in this, we invest almost a fourth of the water existing in the basin. For the basin uh, management, we consider the basin management a success because this uh, management by basins is being imposed on a worldwide level. And we think that this um, basin authority is a way for many countries to focus on development and to look for the cooperation or the collaboration uh, in water management in the development through a basin authority. We think the basin authority is an essential tool uh, to have a technical, a highly technical, decentralized and participatory management and above all a, an efficient management. Now, now Andres de Lucas is going to give you a little vision um, by photographs of the Basin Authority and what we do here. And later on, I am going to uh, describe the participatory bodies of the Water Authority. Thank you, Manuel. When, good morning. I will uh, say uh, that the uh, case in the case of the Ebro River Basin Authority, this authority is very very active. I think it's the most active in Spain. Uh, it started in 1926, and in 1985, with the new Water Act, we changed our goals. We were looking forward to improving the uh, quality of water, or the water quality, the water quality, and to satisfy the demands, or to meet the demands. As for the water quality, the goal of the plan, in collaboration of the water quality unit of this uh, Ebro River Basin Authority, we were looking that the rivers in the uh, higher and medium areas could have a good physical chemical state. In the, um, the lower parts, that is uh, downstream, it is more difficult to achieve this because they have many purposes, agricultural purposes, so the physical chemical quality of water is more difficult downstream. Well, there's, there is a laboratory. You can see it in the photograph. We have this excellent laboratory, and we um, analyze the physical chemical uh, state of the waters and the fish that uh, are there. Along this 65,000 uh, square meters, of uh, the whole basin. Uh, we have uh, a lot of control gorges, meteorological stations, uh, piezometers, 
stations in order to measure the level of underground water and with uh, gauging stations in rivers, canals and tributaries. There are over 1,000 points in order to detect all the changes. All these measurements are compiled in a database which is integrated through a system called SAI, S-A-I, uh, via, via radio communications that picks up or collects all this data and sends this data to the process center. Uh, we will visit this center afterwards um, when we finish this conference. Once the data are in the process center of this basin authority, we manage the data, we process them, and we help the decision-taking process because as we uh, make hydrometeorological models and hydraulic models, we can optimize the resources and we can avoid the very expensive and costly floods that we have been suffering in this basin. But there is a lot of work on the part of the Commissariat, which is one of the legs of the uh, Basin Authority, which is the accumulation of data of the different reports. There is an integration of data, or a data integration, mm -hmm. where we find all the files, including the uh, concessions, the arid uh, exploitations. Um, you can see all this in the web page or the website. So we are also complying with the transparency requirements. And here we can consult the files, whether they are expropriation uh, files or whether they are following administrative uh, processes and which ones, etc. Uh, the uh, Water Commissariat is in charge of controlling the resources, the water resources and uh, it looks forward to keeping the uh, water bodies levels in a good physicochemical state. Uh, the Water Commissariat uh, takes on projects and big construction works such as dams, big dams, etc. The uh, technical management is uh, responsible for 55 big dams over 1 million cubic meters and 350,000 hectares. Well, the uh, other leg of the authority is the hydrological or the water um, planning office, as Victor has said. Manuel Omedas, oh. Victor Arquette has uh, been commenting very clearly on the uh, collegiated uh, or registered bodies. We have uh, one leg, as I was saying before. We have the water users, some 3,000 organizations that are integrated within the basin. And on the other hand, we are the armed arm or the weapon arm of the uh, public management uh, in the country of the fifth part of the whole country territory. These are our bases. And as confederated body, as the grouping of all these organizations within the Water Authority, or the Confederation if you want, but it's, normally it is translated as Water Authority, we are at the service of these organizations. These organizations have their activities, they are uh, public right corporations, they are independent, but within our basin authority, they gather together due to the benefit that they can obtain. That this benefit consists of, on the one hand, the fact that they manage water, 
we as technicians help them, we facilitate to them the uh, dam management or the canal management, and in interchange they um, give us some cannons and some, uh, not cannons really, bonuses or some taxes, some Levi's that we um, receive. Well, so that you can see that this is not only a body for decision making, but also a body for the uh, budget uh, distribution. This is the assembly of users. Of out of the, these organizations, in the end, we have like uh, 500 people, which who are the delegates of this assembly of users. This is the moment of the poll, how the representatives are elected. There are people representing the water supply, people representing irrigation, energy um, sector, etc. And they are elected democratically. You can also see some pictures of the polling process. And afterwards, these people that have been elected, elected democratically on the part of the users, they are the ones who intervene or participate in some of these um, collegial organs, like uh, the um, the uh, Basin Regulatory Council, for example. What do they do? They manage water. The uh, water management in Oscar is not carried out by the Basin Authority. is It is made by the users. It takes place here physically in our basin uh, authority, but they take their decisions or make their decisions of when a dam has to be open, when a dam has to be closed. The same goes to the reservoirs. And they are normally the ones who have uh, the ability or the power to manage droughts for example, everything is managed here in peace. There are no cases of violence, and this is important. Everything is done in peace here. And in cases of draft, for example, they know that there is uh, some harvest, the harvest of uh, X product, or the crop of this product, and due to this draft, for example, they decide to open the dams, and they assume the losses that they can have. They want to save some crops, they open the dams, but of course there are costs derived from all this. And the, they are the ones who take these charges on them, who carry out the risk of the charges, let's say. There, then there is the Water Council, which is the body where it is decided what to do with the basin, what is to do, to be done in the future with Well, uh, they are telling me that uh, I have only one minute left and I'm getting nervous and I'm not really <laughs> being able to formulate my sentences, really. <laughs> well, uh, what I wanted to say is that in the Water Council, it is where we plan and we uh, decide what we want the basin to be in the future. In this sense, there is a participation not only by the users, but the participation and the power in the Water Council is approximately like this, as follows. A third of the decision-making power is by the regulatory bodies of the country, that is the autonomous communities of the country. Another third is by the water users, and another third is by the state, the social or organizations or the ecologists uh, organizations or the economic or social organizations. This is 
a picture, an image of how we vote. We do things democratically by raising the hands and we take the decisions democratically. The same weight goes from a councillor of an autonomous community or an irrigator who is sitting beside him or, or on a representative of an ecological organization. This is the type of representation that we have. Regardless of the informal management that was mentioned by Victor Arquette before, I think that this is the management type that the Latin American countries should uh, choose, should opt for, because this is a democratic uh, management, a very regulated management. Everybody knows the power that they have, and everybody knows who, is rep who he or she is representing. For example, one irrigator can represent here 25,000 families or 30,000 families and these families are represented in this person, and this person decides because he has the regulated representation. The decision-making process is not, uh, does not please to everyone or to everybody, but it is according to the representation power that everybody has. We have made an informal participation that has been enormously uh, complex. We have uh, walked around the 13,000 uh, square kilometers of the river basin and we have given a voice to the ones that do not, did not have a voice. Everybody has made an opinion, has expressed their opinion on how to take decisions or to make decisions for the whole basin. These are photographs of some meetings. And this is the government assembly. This is where the budget is decided, and this is where we take the or we make the decisions. Is this this room in a different um, arrangement? And this is where we uh, make the budget management of this body. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. Okay, let's move on to the next part of the program. It is a debate panel on the strengths and the weaknesses of cooperation at the level of the Ebro River Basin. I would like to ask you, the people who are going to take place on or who are going to speak on this panel, to come to the table, please. Okay, it is going to be moderated by Mario Gaviria. friends of the United Nations who have come, come here. I was consultant of the uh, United Nations at some time in Mozambique in Africa. 
and I have got a little bit of experience of international experience, but not too much. I have got a longer experience here and in the trials of intensifying their participation. I want to tell you that this home that has been, uh, whose, who, Manuel Omedas has made a summary of the things we do here, and the members of the organization has got an experience of almost 100 years for certain things. Uh, we have proven and shown a very high efficiency and efficacy. The panel we are going to start right now gathers four or five experts. And what I'm going to ask them is that instead, we are going to have one hour and a half, more or less. So instead of, uh, instead of uh, uh, giving the presentation should be prepared more or less, I would ask them to talk about the participation from the sector they are working on. Some of them are the Greek people with the, with the food. Some of them are working in the hydropower, electricity, and so on. And they would only deal with two aspects. Two aspects of the things that you believe that are convenient for the participation here, and two aspects of the things that are going wrong. Because otherwise, we're always telling you that we are perfect, and the things that are going wrong are never said. So. I would tell you that you should be able to make an effort and to say these two things, the participation does work, and in these two things, perhaps it does not work so well. I want to tell you that Spain is a very difficult country, very difficult to understand. It is very complex. It's an old country, and at the same time, it's a very new one. And we have got two some events that are not so well known and right now with the crisis we are playing a very strange role but i want to remind you that crises are really a remedy of the system to purify it and are necessary and the crisis we've got in spain is badly diagnosed and is also diagnosed as part of the european crisis it is a crisis of rich people it is a crisis of uh, surplus of production there is too much water too much electricity too many cars too many doctors and engineers who have to emigrate. So therefore, when you are and you analyze the problems of participation in your countries, you have to make a good diagnosis, first of all, of the point you are in the story of development. And perhaps it is totally useless, the things we are doing here. And secondly, some anthropological aspects, which I'm going to remark shortly. First of all, I'd like to tell you that apart from being known because of the football, we play football very well. I think we also do other things much better, which is the production and management of electricity, and above all, the production and management of water. I say that we have four countries for a country of more than 47 million of inhabitants and 2 million of tourists. So for those countries bigger than 50 million of inhabitants, Spain would be between the two or three countries in the world with the best uh, electrical system. I'm not talking about energy as a whole, but about electricity and the best hydraulic system. For instance, for countries bigger than 50 million, we have got the best uh, hydraulic systems. These two experiences, if we have water and energy with a high level of management, and apart from this, we are a country with a surplus of food, we have got the three key elements if we really achieve not to fall in an energetic crisis in the next 10 years. We have got the three key elements that are necessary for life apart from happiness. We need oxygen, which is quite abundant, and water. We need energy, in this case, electrical energy. We are, uh, we are going to a world which must be electrical, sustainable, and with no coal or no oil, because they have been the stages of mankind, but we have to think in terms of the electrical, sustainable uh, energy, so electricity, and therefore 
what we are producing in the 21st century is the rediscovery of the hydroelectricity, which has been transformed not only in the first renewable energy, that uh, it is producing electricity for the last 25 years, so the presses and turbines, the dams and turbines. But there's a new fact, and it is that the renewable energies, which are our future in order to safeguard the planet, to save the planet, have got the difficulty that are difficult to store, to manage. Uh, they are diffuse, they are discontinuous. And we cannot forget, for all those countries, we cannot forget that the 21st century is going to be a hydroelectric century. And electricity is going to be very important because it is the regulation and a storing system of all the rest of the renewable energies. In this Ebro Valley, we have got also a very important wind energy, eolic energy, sun energy. There are there's so much wind that so many nights, uh, electric, we have got a surplus, a surplus of electricity. We have to stop the electricity mills. We do not know the, the wind mills. We do not know how to store it. So electricity is an essential way independently of the batteries, of the compressed air, which has got many technical problems too, and, many, and a lot of chemistry, which is toxic too. The water is transformed in, uh, and is, is, is transformed into a store thanks to a reverted pumping. And this should really determine the future of the whole planning of water from now onwards. I wanted to add something else too, and it is that uh, in the last 100 years, especially in the last 40 years, there have been in Spain, there has been in Spain a struggle, a fight between the planning and the management techno-bureaucratic management and the management that is recommended in a very right way by the European Union, which is democratic and participatory. The management, this participatory uh, management of the whole plan reflects uh, the spirit that has been introduced in Europe in a very positive way, the Scandinavian countries, in the sense that the the decisions must be democratic and participated, which uh, is in conflict with the other orientation that we had in the uh, management of water in Spain, which was, uh, which were the users uh, supervised and overviewed and addressed by the government who were the ones taking the decisions, making the decisions. The problem is that it wasn't very clear who was in charge of the ecosystems. One was in charge of the electricity, the other ones of the foods, of irrigations, others of the uh, drinkable water. But who was defending rivers? Who was defending the populations living close to the river, the, 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 the countryside, the landscape, the pleasure of water, the birds? And this uh, still involves difficulties we have to overcome. And you are at the country, Aragon. You are at the county, sorry, at the region, Aragon which is one of the very few places in the world when you talk, for instance, in pubs about water. Everybody knows about water, so in order to have a participation, we must have a water culture, and we do have a water culture since we are children because it has been a very scarce element. Both poets and local singers uh, make songs about water. We talk about water in the pubs, and there is a very popular, deep conception of water. In order to talk about this topic, we have at this table people who are really relevant of the Ebro Basin, whom I'm going to ask since I have stolen 10 minutes from and Josefina is really agree making a grimace because I've always been an activist and coming as a moderator I thought it was the wrong thing. So I'm not an agitator, but uh, really we are like the bullfighters who are saying the farewells. First of all, Antonio M. V. is going to talk. I think he's in the list. He's professor of law at the University of Zaragoza. He's a very wise man in the aspects of water regarding the territory, and I will ask him to take the floor. So, good morning to you all. 
And apart from congratulating you for being here and to thank Josefina Maestro for this invitation, I'm going to go into the because we have got almost an hour of delay. I'm going to locate myself in the orbit that Josefina has defined in his short intervention previously. Why? Because the phenomena of participation in Spain, as we have said, and as had been, and it's, it has been already explained in Spain, it has been very complex and it's very difficult to understand in its present manifestation. So you see, it's something contradictory. In the last interventions in the photographies, what we have constantly seen are really voting, votation, so the performance of democracy. And uh, all of us know that, and I'm addressing mainly the people of other countries. This, uh, these uh, bodies are like a dictatorship. How can we have a historical continuity? How can we talk about democracy? Having as a starting point uh, the first dictatorship uh, of uh, the last century, 1926 is half of the dictatorship period of Primo de Rivera, um, a military, uh, an army person of Spain. So we are, we are facing issues that are very difficult to transmit summary, and I'm not going to follow directly your indications. I'm going to go to the bottom of this affair, taking into account, especially my experience in many countries in Latin America, participating in conflicts, in normative processes, in many stories they are focused on many things, but specifically on the participation of water. And the small message I would like to transmit is to try from the orbit of the Spanish law, which is obviously a law with more uh, positive and negative aspects to say, some things that can be useful here. We have been talking about participations of users and citizens. The first one, the first uh, thing that concerns a lawyer or a lawmaker who wants to serve to the practice as it is myself, who's the user? An issue which is not so easy to define, especially when we are going to the different uh, uh, fields. A user is technically the one who has got the right to the private use of water. So this is a legal um, entitlement coming from a concession, maybe from a historical title. Sometimes uh, there are still people who are using water uh, still uh, because of the mercy given or favors given by medieval kings and queens, and this has been reflected in a register. So there is an indispensable condition for a real participation. We have to know what we are talking about when we are talking about users and which are the contents of the rights, something which is not, not easy at all to establish. We are still in the hydrographic confederations as living on specific programs for the specific restriction of the registrations, the depuration of the registrations, we cannot set up uh, a system of participation based on those uh, people, who, on those people who are holding certain legal rights. Thinking on the countries I have already thought, if this. Uh, legal entitlements are not registered in a public registrations are not useful and they should be confrontation proof. And if this does not exist the participation that we can deal with them uh, has got problems in the route. We are talking about participations of the users and citizens. A citizen as a concept which is something very general. The citizen is the person who has got their own civil and political rights. Talking really that we are talking about democracy, but if it is not like this, everything is too much and the concept is too much. So participation of citizens apparently makes reference to an individual one. Sometimes when we mix the word uh, citizens and users, we find that we can have in the category of the users public administrators, and within the category of it, uh, this is a certain contradiction because the public administration can also be a user of water. And within the citizens, we can find entrepreneur, economic, social organizations too. So this demands too a very clear definition. But in both cases, the experience of the Spanish law, we are talking about organized users. 
organization is something fundamental and essential, and this is something that arises from other levels different to the ones which are strictly administrative regarding water. The organizations of users in Spain, when does it start? I don't know. And I don't think that anybody can really answer in a very accurate way to this question. If uh, uh, talking about this Ebro Basin, if we trace back to the oldest documents, we find some features of organizations of users in some bronze documents of mo which are older than 2,500 years. So what it has happened really in the field of the users is something that is functioning or working out uh, apart from the administration, which has got a very ancient tradition and has been shaped up as time has gone by. And coming to a certain moment, which is traditional and old, it is inserted in something which is much more old fashioned. It only has got 250 years of age, which is the administrative phenomena. So there we mix what Mario Gaviria has rightly said, this culture of water, this culture without any other addition, the culture of the tradition of the user with the rationalizing culture of the organization, which means the public administration. And this is a kind of very interesting mixture, what is happening there, but the trials that can be artificial of uh, not taking into account this tradition of the organized users to insert it in a structures of new creation usually gives a bad result. And citizens are also citizens who are organized in NGOs in the case of environmental issues, uh, trade unions, entrepreneur associations, consumers, and so on, something that in every occasion has to be derived apart from the administration. And due to the evolution of a very long development until a certain moment, that was a spontaneous phenomena of uh, a pure interest association is inserted in the administrative one. So in Spain, it happened in 1996. It was the first time when this integration happened. So it, it was the day before yesterday. And I say it is the day before yesterday in order to give a hopeful message for people of other countries, for them to know that things here are very recent in some fields, but we have got some tradition or a long tradition in many others. We are talking about participation, what is important here. Users and citizens do participate, and this is very difficult to explain in many countries. To participate is not to say, oh, the decision is apart from the participation is a process. I'm talking about what Pablo has been said about this active involvement. We can search every word for it. But any other thing is determining for this water field. And the decision is decided by somebody else, uh, different to the users, due to a problem of democratic legitimation. Because we have got on the one hand the general interests which are responsible for our fields. Participation is useful for the decision, decision adjusted that has to be aligned with the participatory elements of what the users and the citizens have been really configurating through the specific process. But the decision is somewhere else and it is ultimately in the field, in the hands of the political power. Decision on what? We have been using during this morning expressions such as the management of water. I would say, well, this is not so accurate. The users and the citizens are not participating in where it is really the management of water. There is a still, in this Spanish federation model, a very clear difference about what it, is, what it is to manage the water as a public service, and also this means to give uh, and to modify the concession, to authorize, to sanction, and there there is no participation. This is a decision, really, and this is a democratic one. And uh, the users are not participating, or the citizens are not participating in this uh, granting of a concession, unless you understand as participation the formal one of being able to attend a public information process when this is obvious and published in the, ma in the newspapers, in the bulletins of the province, 
and the political powers decide to communicate it to everyone. So this uh, participatory management that takes place in the field of water has got to do with issues that probably can be much more, impo much more important, but are not making reference to what is really and deeply a case of public ownership. So therefore, public management, administrative management, and management uh, directed by the political bodies of a government. So we still have got that difference presence between the confederation and the management of the public domain in the hydraulic field and the management of the works, the sanctioning of the budgets, the strategic plans, and so on and so forth. And last, what I was still hiding in this first conceptual intervention I'm presenting, I wanted to make it very short and in order to focus on concepts which are really indispensable so that uh, we can say that we are talking about this or about something very different. Participation is expressed really in this uh, basin authorities and in this one of this uh, Ebro water which is called right now the one of the catchment and it was called before it used to be called as the one of the basin and it is compiled now as the catchment so the amendments of the management of water which are directly derived from the rights uh, sanctioned by the European Union so what does this Council of Water do regarding the planning? They elaborate it in a very formal way. They do not elaborate it in the Council. So the administrative bodies elaborate them, the Office of Planning. The Council finally is going to approve it because they have participated in the former documents prior to the elaboration of the important topics. They have been able to monitor and to follow up the administrative work and they are going to give the approval and this is not the definite one, we must pay attention to this, because this will be in the hands of the public power. So the government of the nation, as it couldn't be otherwise, and this makes reference to the differences I've told you about what is participation and what is to decide. They decide, they plan this uh, hydrologic uh, planning. So the government does that, and what it is really, because this is an issue which is really dividing clearly this Spanish model compared to the ones of other countries. We have got a very long history of planning, but the present plans, the ones that we are working right now in the field of the Council of Water in this Ebro catchment has absolutely nothing to do with the traditional ones, with the first plan of hydraulic works who stated in 1902. So we are talking about more than 100 years. So there wasn't any kind of ordering among themselves, and it has nothing to do with one of hydraulic wars with the, with the decree of 1926, which said that it was the first function of this I, of this water confederation. So there must be a mixture between management, factual management, legal order, decisions which are which have to be a specific and finally protection making the most of it use it so the most interesting feature in the Spanish law something which is not shared by any other legal system until now is that the plan in the the water planning is a specification of the water legislation in the specific field of the catchment of the water catchment made reference by the planning. The planning is a norm, something which is not understood neither in Italy nor in France nor in any other Latin American country where they are still getting closer to the idea of planning. Through the planning we are specifying the law and the right in a very certain place. This is something very, very important because really in other countries it happens the same too. The geographical conditions of a basin have got nothing to do with the other ones. The ones of another basin, the water law, the rulings of the water law cannot really go into so much detail of the specific data regarding climate, sociology, economy, uh, of productive structure, soil quality, that the territory of a confederation can have uh, different to the other one. And something original in the water law of 1985 was to make a hydrological plan and to transform it into a right, not only making the articulation of hydraulic works, that's a very important added value. And in this creation of uh, the law, 
It is where the citizens and users participate within the, within the framework of this Water Council of the Catchment, which is a body where it is worth the while to study, to go into deep, and I got nothing to say but positive elements to highlight. So really, Mario, in my last words, I really fulfill your requisite. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Antonio and Viz, for this excellent and crystal clear presentation and also adjusting yourself to time. So that has allowed us to complete all these approaches. Now in program, we have got this uh, participation from the social perspective with the presence of Manuel Omedas and Andres de Lucas from this uh, Ebro River Racing Authority. Okay, in my case, following the indications of our moderator, You've said that we should mention two positive aspects and two negative ones. And I think that the positive aspects have already been highlighted. And maybe too much. But I'm going to focus on the negative ones, which are the ones I, want, I would like to link with some experiences we've acquired or that I have perceived in my journeys to Latin America. So, negative aspects that we have got here. First of all, I have something to say. The management of water by basin bodies, at least in this in, at least in this basin authority, is a very austere and cheap management. Why? Because this coupling of authority and responsibility is very, very balanced or quite balanced. So people who are making the decisions on what it has to be spent is the one who afterwards has to pay the taxes, levies, and fees. So therefore, to make investments out of the reality, out of the scope of reality, is something impossible in these basin authorities. When we are making decisions on what kind of works should be done in this irrigation area or in this exploitation board, so the very own users are the one who says that uh, you shouldn't be crazy, because if you are crazy, you have to pay for that craziness afterwards. So this is an aspect I would like to highlight, because when we are talking about money, this is the best participation. The participatory budgets are the one which give you the essence of whether in a body or in an entity there is participation or there is not participation when you are dealing with the economic aspects, which are the negative aspects that we can observe and in this case, the negative aspects that we see are that in this democratic management, there are some parts which uh, do not, do, which are not managed democratically. The professor envied before, and Mario Gaviria too, they have made a comment saying that on the one hand we have got this generation of wealth through water, but there's another aspect, which is how, how can we protect this water environment, this water resources. So in the protection of these water resources, there are some social bodies, there are also ecological organizations, which uh, are basically the speaking partners of this uh, preservation of the environmental values that must be sustained by this water management, and especially in European countries, is getting more and more demanded, the generation and the achievement of a good ecological status. You have to do it either through basin or do whatever you have to in each basin. And uh, but we, afterwards, we are going to examine you. We are going to test you due to the results you have acquired. In this sense, you say participation. How do we say that some organizations are the ones representing the environmental interests? There is a lack of uh, de democratic management. 
on the part of uh, these environmentalist organizations. I think that that was what we wanted to do first with the uh, recreational organizations. That is, that they should democratically look for their representatives so that when they come here to participate in the Basin Council, they say, well, how am I representing here? Well, I represent the uh, citizenship, the part of the citizenship that is being supporting me. This is important because I see in some countries where I had the chance to visit, that I, that I had the chance to visit, they are um, really making this participation that is leading us to this uh, assembly management. And this type of management, the assembly management, is really bad for water management. Everybody has to know who he or she is representing and for which purpose. So this European regulation really is uh, presenting this problem. Nobody knows who is who in the representativity or the representation. And another aspect, well, I think this, the one I have just mentioned, is a lesson that has to be learned. Try to avoid the uh, assembly management. I know that the um, Inter-American Development Bank is fostering this type of uh, uh, management, and I would like to ask the Peruvian representative uh, who are undergoing, in Peru they are undergoing this uh, type of uh, basin management process. I would like to hear her opinions on the experiences that they have there, and just to know whether these uh, basin management, I think it can work very well if there are three or four things that do not affect them. One, the Basin Authority has to have their, its own life. That is, it, has, it must not depend only or solely from the central state or the central government, because it has to have the, its own um, economic resources. It has to be able to be managed in such a way that the central state helps to manage water, but it should not be a rigidity element or a, an inflexible element that could limit the uh, management of the basin authority. Another aspect of rigidity that can affect the basin organization is that administrational, I mean regional administrations may want to intervene very strongly, politically strongly, so that they would affect the development of the basin body or organization. And the third one, the third thing to be avoided is the one I just mentioned, the fact that the water management turns into assembly management because the assembly should have their own um, democratic participation channels. These are the three things I think we have to work on in order to improve our management, our basic management. Thank you, Manuel. Do you want to add anything, Andres? Because you're working together? Very well. Now the floor goes to Clemente Prieto from Iberdrola, with uh, which, of course, I am an anti-nuclear activist, and uh, I have uh, had a lot of work and collaboration with Clemente. Um, uh, in the end. I was affected, we were affected by some uh, of the nuclear plants and well, I had much to do, a lot of to do with 
Iberdrola. Now Iberdrola is one of the biggest or the largest electrical companies of the planet, of which we have to learn a lot, All, in spite of the fact that in the beginning we were enemies. I have to say that this is the first electrical company of the world. The traditional company was absorbing the little plants of the river, the local plants. Every uh, they were local, these um, w power plants. In the beginning, they were very local. And they um, were, they made a mistake uh, in absorbing the nuclear plants, I think. But now, fortunately, they are reconsidering this. And now it has turned, Iberdrola has turned into the first wind um, energy company of the world without but without uh, tr without wanting to get into the nuclear issue I don't want to comment to make any comment on this but uh, I don't want uh, that you take my silence as a, as a concession no I just want to avoid this issue well anyway Um, I don't think that it would be advisable to focus on just uh, one basin, although I have been, as Victor has said, uh, have been uh, um, having a lot to do with other basin organizations. I, I have excellent personal relationship with some representatives of these basins. There is a curious thing if you compare the different basins. Every basin has their own personality, I can say. The Tagus or the Ebro rivers or the um, Juca river or the Duero river, has, they all have different personalities, all these basins. But uh, to me, the Ebro River is special. I always had a special lean, a special bond with uh, the Ebro River Basin. Although Iberdrola has uh, had many interchanges with uh, the Ebro River Basin. Well, starting with the two issues that I think would be more positive in the Basin authorities, the first one I would uh, enhance is the possibility of a good relationship between users and administration. This is a, a bi-directional uh, relationship and it's a very good one, a very beneficial one for both parties, for both parts, I mean. The fact of having this uh, direct and personal communication in both senses so as to get to know the limitations of the administration and the wishes or the needs of the users, that is always a very interesting advantage. In the end, you don't take the decision. I cannot really say that, we, uh, that you can influence really or have a major influence in uh, the energy sector. In many basin authorities, uh, this influence has been treated as an intruder. The uh, irrigator is regarded as a social good, and the hydroelectrical representative is regarded as a social evil. Uh, when we are making a profitable, a good use for the nation of a natural resource, but I suppose this is impossible to change. Secondly, I would like to say that uh, the organization, the Spanish organization of uh, the basin authorities has allowed them to demonstrate since the, uh, since the Water Framework Directive came into force they have been they have proven a very useful tool for um, water planning i could not imagine spain without these basin authorities 
I wonder what they could have done without what we could have done in Spain and uh, especially with such a complex organization that we are having without the basin authorities. We, together with Greece, we are the last to country to uh, comply with the uh, regulation as for terms. Uh, we always try to be um, fairer than the fairest, and in some cases this brings up delays. As for the aspects to be improved, well, the first one would be Um, I would like to ask a reduction of the relative weight of the public administrations and the public bodies in the management bodies. Because, of course, they have a one-third of representation. It is not one-third, one-third, one-third. It is one-third compared to two-thirds, really, on the paper, it is only one third, but their real power really, really means a two thirds. And they can even force the Basin Authority to adopt a decision. I'm not going to say against their interest, their own interest, but they can um, even have some harm, make some harm on the users by abiding by the administrations. Uh, okay, in this basin authorities, we in in theory we have the right to um, stop any law, to say whatever you want, to you have a voice. That's true, theoretically, but in the practice, it is not so much so. Probably it cannot be different. I would like, but I would like to imagine an effort in which without getting to the assembly uh, effort, I would like to see how the uh, presence of users is not limited to just uh, an expression of things, a mere expression of things. I would like this representation of users to have a real, real voice uh, and being able to change things. And the last thing I would like to say, uh, as for the personal relationships, which I, I still think they are fundamental and essential. I remember this water commissariat when there was uh, this figure existing. They, he was saying that the worse the administration, the relationships with the administration, the best the personal relationships have to be. That is true. That is absolutely true, but I think the without diminishing or reducing this idea of the personal relationships, I think that we should make an effort to uh, improve the access to the ICTs. That means the uh, technical and the computer uh, communication devices and uh, of course not having any influence on or against the personal relationships I think they are they are first of course <laughs> primary but also the communication uh, through computers has to be enhanced thank you very much Prieto now the floor goes to Cesar Trillo, Mr. Cesar Trillo, who is the president of the Alto Aragon, uh, irrigation president of the Alto Aragon, which is a community that you will have the chance to visit this afternoon after we finish. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I would like, Mario, I would like to thank you for, thank everybody for inviting me here. I am going to speak about the uh, Basin Authority. 
I'm going to join Mario a little bit on what he has just said. I've been working on this for a long time. I know this water authority or the basin authority for a long time. I abs absolutely defend the basin authorities. And I think that without them, if they were not existing, we should create them. In fact, the um, European... Um, the European community has been taking this model for some purposes. And beyond the uh, bodies which integrate the uh, Basin Authority, there is an issue that uh, shocks me. Javier is the eighth president that I know of this Water Ebro River Basin Authority. And therefore, there has been a kind of uh, a kind of parade or a kind of procession of presidents. I have known almost all of them. There are three here sitting at my sides. <clears throat> But what is the success, a very important success of this uh, Basin Authority in the end? Well, the change of precedence has not been uh, remarked. I mean, if uh, the government in force is putting their precedent, well, the government may be, the, the previous president maybe is taking his uh, preferred secretary with him to the new uh, job position that he's taking, but more or less the staff is always the same, except for the president and maybe the secretary. The rest of the staff is always there, it's the same. So the political changes have not really been uh, leaving a mark on the Basin Authority. The communities of users is, goes the same to the communities of users. The uh, irrigators' communities were developed in a moment where the big private corporations, irrigation corporations or companies, were disregarded and the state assumed or took on the management of the irrigation and the water management. And at that moment in Aragon, we were having a very ambitious plan that had to be developed, a water plan. And we started from the idea that it had to be the state, the one who should carry this plan out. Well, from that moment and along the 20-something years that I've been coming to this house, there have uh, been better and worse moments moments where we really had a debate or moments where we were in peace. But in the end, we always ended up by having a dialogue and understanding each other. There have been some tensions, it's true. Uh, because as Antonio was saying, it is true that it is the politician who makes the decision, but only uh, to a certain level when it is about important decisions you can go and check the public information. But in the everyday work, the everyday work has been very uh, fluent, very smooth, and, well, I think you who have come from other countries, we should explain a little bit and give you the uh, idea of, uh, or the context of this area, because you come from many different contexts and maybe your water management models are quite different from us, from ours. But maybe uh, in Spain we are a bit uh, behind compared to other countries in many other aspects, but not in the water management. I have to say that I was in Turkey visiting Turkey, and I saw that the communities of irrigators were being created at that time, 
And, and they were protesting, they were always complaining uh, because they didn't know how to include the commun these communities of irrigators in the water authorities. Well, I think the way they were doing it in Turkey was not the best one. If we want to create irrigators communities, we have to give them autonomy. We have to leave them work to respect them and, but I also say that when they are created, finally, this is the way we work. Yesterday, we were listening to the case of Bolivia, 5,000 hectares and 100 hectares. Some people, they say that 100 hectares um, are a lot to create a community. In many cases, 100 hectares do not, cannot um, afford themselves uh, the looks of having a computer or a secretary, but they uh, they have to be they have to have a structure, and here we are organized in basic uh, communities, in general communities, in basin federations, and in a national federation where they go to the basins uh, federations. What happens here? Sometimes we are really we are really um, an inconvenient truth for the administrations. We are uncomfortable for the or inconvenient for the administrations, but of course we are important. Can the hydrological or the water plan of the Ebro uh, be passed without the irrigators? Well, it could be, but not without the users. Do not forget that uh, in Borrell's times, the users were against the uh, amendment of the plan and his proposal was not passed thanks to the users who didn't want this amendment. And uh, the minister was saying that he was doing a national plan for the users. And if the users say no to this plan, of course, this plan is not going to, to be passed. And he put it in the drawer and forgot about this plan. And that was on a national level. I don't manage the water of 135,000 hectares, not contradicting what Antonio was saying, but uh, to a different level. I do have a decision there. I remember in 2005 there was a serious drought and I was sharing, I was the one deciding how to share the water. I was, my, uh, I was the arbitrator and the water, the basin authority did not tell me how to do it. The water authority did not um, mingle in me, in my uh, way of doing things. And the, there are conflicts uh, that appear in my community. They are not solved by the irrigation uh, jury, and uh, in that case, 1%, more or less 1% go to the Basin Authority, but 99% of the conflicts that appear in my area are solved within my organization, my irrigators, communities, irrigators. Just by way of example, I remember I presented some claims, some uh, allegations, some statements or declarations uh, against a, uh, an amendment that wanted to be carried out, but of course uh, it was on, on the modernization of irrigation. But to me it makes no sense that the county council approves the fact that I have to modernize my community if I am not there to make this decision. It is me who has to pay for this, 10,000 euros in fact. And of course, they cannot not count on me for this decision. Well, this is the message I wanted to convey to you. The irrigators communities, this was said by a Nobel Prize that is not no longer among us. 
unfortunately. These communities are not necessary for water management, but if they are created, they have to be created independent um, under the umbrella of the administration, but not complying with everything that the administration says. This is my uh, point of view. Rudolf yesterday was saying that uh, yesterday there was uh, an area with two more Celsius degrees and they want the water for themselves and they don't want to yield water. Well, this uh, managing water or managing the basin by stretches, by parts, let's say, is not the best way. A basin has well, there is the basin unit, but I understand by this expression the management of the basin. And it has to be carried out from beginning to end of the river. Any type of decision in any point of the river affects the whole river, affects the mouth and affects the source. And therefore, We had an experience in the Guadalquivir River in 1993 or 94, I think. It belongs to the Autonomous Community of Andalusia. It was a disaster, a total disaster. The management, while the uh, Junta de Andalusia, the, let's say, local government of Andalusia, was managing these resources, uh, we were there, the, we, the users, were there. And thus, we have Thanks God, thanks to God, we have a constitution, and thanks to God, we have a Water Act. After the 800 uh, civil servants of the um, Basin Authority of the Guadalquivir um, were transferred into the Junta de Andalucía, into the local government of Andalucía, that was that proved to be a failure, a total failure, and they were moved again to the um, Basin Authority of the uh, Guadalquivir River in Andalusia. And, of course, if we have one-third, one-third, and one-third of representation, it makes no sense that the autonomous community does not uh, give its opinion on the changes. But we are talking about a river, the Ebro River, that crosses nine different autonomous communities and the beneficiaries of these dams, for example, that are along this river, of course, they have a voice. And it is difficult to, con to reconcile all these um, impacts and these voices. If it is allowed, if the irrigators communities are allowed to work as public right corporations with their own autonomy, it is true that the relationship with the basin authorities, in the case of Spain, they have always been very good, at least in Spain. We have even seated together to plan the water fees, the works, we even plan what we can spend, we plan what we can pay, and in the end we work well, we succeed. This is the positive part regardless of the organs or the bodies that are there. I don't like the um, dam emptying commission because this is where they are really important. I remember one night at 3 a.m. the chief of exploitation or uh, the chief of um, execution called me because um, he had to take an important decision and he couldn't make it without all the members uh, involved. And of course I could have been saying, well, leave me in peace, leave me sleep, but I really felt satisfied by the fact that my voice and my opinion was important as everybody else's. One thing that I criticize really strongly is the famous authorities community committee of the Basin Authority. We cannot talk about participation and slam the door on the face of the users with this commission. The framework directive or the water framework directive 
says that we should be naming a main authority for the basin, and we wanted to be there as members of this basin. In the end, well, I have to say that I am a president of the Ebro River Basin, and as president of these irrigators' communities, I have the vice presidency. And the, in that uh, authorities' community, they required the presence of the second president, the vice president, as well as the president. And the voice was not given to me. Mm, and I here join what I said about the rural development plan. We, the users, have to pay for many of these decisions, and at least we should be informed of uh, what is it about. Another topic that I think that we should really try to improve is the topic of, well, maybe not non-fulfilling of an agreement, but a delay in its fulfillment, really. I have been here for the last 25 years fighting for a regulation I still don't have. Apparently, things are better right now. But we have adopted agreements, and in too many occasions, mainly regarding planning topics, we are transforming it. It would, it would be in Spain, we have got the three wise men, and the children send a letter to the three wise men to receive the presents in Christmas. At this moment, these children have got almost everything they have uh, asked for in that letter and maybe even a little bit more. So we have sent a letter to the three wise men, but uh, really these uh, presents are really taking very long to come to us, not due to the Basin Authority, but due to the economic and political decisions that have to be taken in the country. But at least there should be an order and satisfying the petitions regarding the time they have reached you. So there's another thing that creates a cer certain bad spirits or bad feeling among the users, which is a little bit this uh, stiffness. So when we, when we talk about the staff uh, of uh, the authority and in the kindergarten of the authority, we are subject to an agreement by the Ministry of Environment, which is transferred somehow to all to the whole members of the staff of the very own ministry. So, in an office with a timetable from eight to three, this could be something logical. But in a kindergarten, it is not logical to have an intensive timetable of eight to three because you have to go around the channel to go around the channels in the morning, to go around the channels in the afternoon to see whether water is circulating in the right way, whether there have been mistakes, whether the level of the flows is increased or decreased. And in these uh, sectors of the staff, there should be a bigger flexibility. And apart from this, uh, some updatings have been done, and they lead us to reduce uh, the uptakes in the channels. And this updating or modernization are really very expensive, and we should know how to save money on exploitation and in a path where we needed five bodyguards, perhaps we could do just with two right now. So I think that it would be good, even for the very own authority, to tackle these topics, because otherwise, at the end, really, the and happiness or the dissatisfaction reaches to a non-desirable situation. But to sum up, as I said before, I really defend these basic authorities. I think that uh, this Ever River Basin Authority, of course, with the due respect to everyone in the country, because some people say that uh, in Spain there are just uh, the several river basin authority and the remaining ones. We have always been a model of participation. We have always been a model, which is the model that it is not so easy, really, to have uh, the bookkeeping updated every day, and the users and the irrigators and the hydroelectric power. Well, everything is adjusted to the last cent. And if they were not here, we should create them. So thank you very much, indeed.
Thank you very much, Cesar. A very useful and true presentation. And the program tells me now that it is very interesting that people from other countries can also express themselves to pose questions, to express critics or concerns or make remarks. So I'm going to give the floor. And we still have got one quarter of an hour, more or less. So there was somebody from Peru who wanted to make a remark, I think, according to the program I've got. Thank you. I come from Peru. My name is Antonieta Noli, and I have got a specific project at the north area of the country. And we have got some perception of how it is being implemented, this water law. And above all, this configuration of the council of the basin. So in this sense, and thanks for the presentations of the real lecturer because really they have highlighted many important as aspects for this implementation that my country is undergoing. But the first question I would like to pose would be addressed to Mr. Cesar. How do you do the registration? How do you register the users? Because as Dr. Nembit has said, we have to think of the citizens. And I want to think, I, I come to think about what uh, how do we uh, make this registration of the users due to the land they own? Because, for instance, in my country, really the board is really very prone to accept more the questions or demands or the people who are users of water. We have got a very long coastline, and we are talking about the agricultural or farming entrepreneurs. And in the high and in the intermediate part, we have got also a, a board of users, but in the higher, in the upper layer, we do not have a board of users. This is the birth of the basin. And we are not taking into account this in the structure. So that's why I was thinking that these citizens that are not in the upper part of the Peruvian case, they are not participating. So what is it like in the Spanish case? In the upper part, who, who's responsible for that? Who's in charge of that? Where water is given and produced? The other question is something I consider to be very important and I would like to you to give me some highlights about uh, what Mr. Clemente has said before. Sometimes you feel like an intruder, so I think sometimes there are many companies, because they are working in the Amazonian area, which do not belong to this users board. So what is your opinion, for instance, on how can you register this uh, companies which are working there and are making use of water, how are you registering them? And probably you know that we have got problems with mining companies. Have you had any problems in this sense? Because as it has been said to the weight of the votation, so the voting processes sometimes has got to do with this juices board. And in Peru, the overwhelming trend is with the agriculture people. And regarding the big entrepreneurs right now, industrial people, they are considered to be a part of this users board. They are not uh, one more, they are not a user more, but they have got a very big weight because of the money they are dealing with. So really my question is, how are you regarding the charging of this uh, use of uh, light and water? Are there any differences? Has it got to do with the cubic metal or with the kind of product? you are releasing. How are you charging it? Because we have got many differences at the level of the citizens regarding light and water, electricity and water. And maybe the last question I would like to pose is regarding this participatory aspect. I start to feel that really the word participatory is, uh, is being worn out. And uh, the fact of uh, sitting at the table makes you already participate. But how the participant is conveying the ideas, concerns, uh, informations of the group he belongs to? This is my question. OK. If you think it's all right, in a very short way, perhaps or all of you can talk about it. OK. I do agree. OK. So from the table, we have got a suggestion that other countries have to talk first, and then we have to make a sum up. And then, of course, they can also uh, answer to you in the break or in the conversation. We have got somebody from Bolivia listed 
who wanted to make a remark. It is not something compulsory. Good morning. I think that there are many topics that could be important. It could be very important to ask them, but I would like to uh, devote my time to three of them. The first is that it is obvious that the planning units and management units are the basins. But in Bolivia, we do have a situation which is quite difficult of discriminating because there is a scale of basins which really binds us to talk about this topic, about uh, where where does this basin finish? There are, there are basins which are very big, sub-basins and micro-basins, and this is a very complex topic for us. The situation of this uh, Ebro River Basin can be very specific, so from the birth until the end of it, and we can talk about different dimension until its mouth. This Amazonas Basin is almost impossible to plan, the one of the Titicaca Lake Tube. So we have got an added difficulty in order to relay these bodies of the basin, intermediate ones, with the ones of the bigger basin. The second one is the topic of the hydric, of the water planning. We are talking about uh, leading plants in the long run, but also of this water planning or hydric planning in the operative sense of this shorter cycle, so one per year or one every six months. So this is the second topic. How do you understand the planning in the, in the terms? And we are talking about the third one. What happens if, for instance, in a basin, according to this planning, there exists to be, there happens to be a new need of water due to the urban growth, to the loss of uh, farming areas which do not need irrigation anymore, but the urban areas do need it. So it would be important for us to know about the experiences you, you have acquired about it. Thank you to the Bolivian representative, Ethiopia. So just one second, they are going to finish with uh, their question. I'm Umberto Cantaria. Sorry, sorry, I hadn't seen you also. I also come to Bolivia, so first of all, thanking you for your generosity to share with us what you have, what you know, what you do. I just wanted to ask you, and perhaps you can answer to me, how is it that you have solved the problem of the regions? We in Bolivia, we have got a very serious problem of regionalism, so each region tries really to allocate every resource for themselves. And I understand that you have solved here this problem in a very generous way, let's call it that way, setting up uh, distribution mechanisms depending on the needs. So this is a topic. I would like to know how have you dealt with that. And the other one is which dimension has got the reusage of water, of wastewater, and also the extent of this usage for farming objectives. Okay, I do agree. And now Ethiopia. There is a list, and I prefer to follow the list, and also in Bolivia. No, out Saudi Arabia is going to talk. Bien, muchísimas gracias, señor presidente. Mi nombre es... from Saudi Arabia. I used to work with the Ministry of Agriculture and Water. And with the water, I was the Deputy Minister for Water Affairs, and now working with the Saudi Parliament, and the water is dealing with the water issues. My question, uh, we learn a lot from your presentations. They are very, very constructive. Uh, we are trying to benefit from your experience. Our way of dealing with uh, water in, for irrigation is completely different from what you are using. We have a regional aquifers. It is not basins by basin. We have regional aquifer that extends hundreds of kilometers which uh, many administrative uh, regions uses the same aquifer. And uh, the whole management is done by the Ministry of Water and Saudi Arabia has uh, more than 2 million square kilometers. And it is very difficult to manage. The investors, the, the irrigators uh, coming from north to south, uh, there is no, uh, well, there is no irrigator uh, communities. We don't have water, water user association, and we, we currently suffer from depleting the aquifers. Groundwater levels are going down. 
uh, water quality is deteriorating with the increasing uh, drawdown. We are trying to find uh, similar conditions of ours to learn from. Thank you very much for your... Okay. Muy bien. Egipto. And now Egypt. Magdi Said from Egypt. Uh, I wanted to give me an idea about some hydrological data about Ebropism. The yearly discharge, the rate of precipitation, uh, the watershed area, the irrigated area about this Ebro. To know what the faces and what the challenges faces your authority in Ebro basin. Also, I see in the presentation a huge number of dams. It is 55 dams. Are the assembly of participators uh, participate in putting the operating rules for these dams? And the, the major purpose of these dams is irrigation or generating electricity. Thank you. Kenya. Kenya. Okay, thank you very much, all of you, for your very good uh, presentations. Uh, I have a few questions uh, to the various presenters. Uh, for Antonio, the lawyer, I was a bit confused when you talked about the users and administrators. I thought administrators are also part of users. So to me, maybe it's just a clarification. Uh, the other one is to look at how do you link the basin or the catchment plans to the national level? Because there's this uh, Abro River, I believe uh, you talked about the planning. How do you link that to the national water plan or maybe master plan or something like that? Uh, to Mr. Sisa, the president of the UA, what, what do you get from the national government as a UA, Water Use Association? What are the benefits? What do you give? What do you get? And then also within the same river basin, I want to believe you have the sap, the sap wars. How do you link up? Are there fees, levies, or taxes that the wars pay, or something like that? And also, the, it's like you are not very comfortable with the irrigators as wars. I want to believe the irrigators are also wars. Because they also use the, the water, maybe just also a clarification. Um, there was also the, from the photos, I somehow noticed the gender imbalance. When I looked at the board, the big board or the council, it's maybe 100%, if not 95% male. What is happening to the female representation in the water issues. Uh, for us in Kenya, UAS and uh, UA formation is very recent. I congratulate uh, Spain, which is almost 100 years. For us, we are talking about less than uh, five, seven years as a project. We have been facilitating formation of sub UAS. So this is a challenge to us, but I want to say that the uh, necessity is the mother to invention and uh, water is becoming an issue now in Kenya because we are also thinking of feeding the population through irrigation. We have been doing uh, subsistence farming through rain fed uh, farming. But when we come to irrigation, that is where the issues of water come in. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Guatemala. Guatemala, adelante. Guatemala, Vamos a ver right si now. We are getting too close because, because there's a coffee, so we are going to reduce this uh, coffee break. My, na my name is Santiago Giron. I come from Guatemala. And I'm working from a foundation which is from this uh, coffee farming sector. I think it is very interesting, all the things that we have been listening to this morning. 
during the conference that it is also very remarkable that we are still at the very uh, at the very first stage in Guatemala in these issues. But despite this, thanks to the cooperation that even Spain has contributed in the country. The concepts of basin, micro basin have been already created. And the topic is that it is something very recent. As Kenya has said before, in Guatemala, we are just starting to restrict the basins or defining the basins. So we are in a process that it is still at the birth phase. But we have got a very big complexity in front of us because it hasn't been defined really who are the users, who are going to manage the basin. We have got basins that are made up by thousands and thousands of communities, so we are not talking about the community. And I think that this could be something very useful to transfer this to the country through the bodies that are cooperating there. And I think that uh, you are already intervening, such as in DSC. DSC has already got projects which have been implemented in Guatemala and have included other stakeholders, stakeholders at the community level, because really to reach the Congress is more or less impossible. But at the level of community, we have already achieved many things and we are immersed in that process. I cannot really contribute with much more, but I have learned a lot from you, so thank you very much indeed. I'm coming from Madagascar. Uh, I want to uh, ask one question. Uh, if uh, about the risk of uh, non appreciation, non local appreciation of the actors, if it's a management part uh, participative of water, is the um, uh, for uh, the, in, the strong involvement of uh, the uh, government uh, can be a barrier of the appropriation of uh, actors, local actors of uh, management. If uh, it is a risk, how to limit it? Thank you. Bien, yo creo que como estamos de tiempo, Looking at the time, we still have got available. If you think it's right from the table, can you answer in a very short way? Or do you want really to answer in the coffee break in some specific case? Because otherwise, I think it's going to be impossible. What do you think is better? Or maybe the most meaningful items you would like to, to remark, to comment? So start, please. Start, please, then. OK, just. Uh, I would, in three minutes, I'm going to answer, taking into consideration the people who have really posed their questions about the most remarkable items of the things that have been asked and about the things I can't really answer with my knowledge. So it's a capital issue. That is the concept of basin, and I haven't mentioned it before. So for instance, in the, in the Andes mountain range counties, countries as a rule, and don't think of my opinion. Don't you pay attention to my opinion because the concept of basin in Spain or the concept of basin in Europe is different. And we cannot really apply this to the Andean countries because the, the Andes mountain range has got more than 4,000 met meters of height and we are thinking of basins when they are facing the Pacific Oceans and not on the other side, but the problem you have got in Peru is that really the water you are discharging to the Pacific Ocean is really insignificant and uh, the dry areas are really facing the Pacific Ocean. By the Guayas River in Equator is really the one posing a problem in this management of basin and really in Latin America and in Bolivia happens the same and with a more serious issue because there is not any mouth or any pathway to the sea so all of them are basins and in my opinion there is no way to organize a management of water in these undying countries with the European uh, basin model. I would really forget about it 
to start with, and secondly, how to organize this. I have drawn your attention about the registration, which is something capital and essential. If there are no users who have been registered, there's no way of organizing a participatory system. But how do you register users when they are living at 4,000 meters of height? What is happening at, that, at those countries is this overwhelming predominance of mining, which is having conflicts right now. They are really the users of water or destroyers of water, depending on the point of view we have about it. And thirdly, and I say that regarding, in my conclusion, the topic of fees. When we are talking about fees and about charging and payment and this table and the former ones, we are talking that in the global way, not about the urban suppliers, which is what you call about it in, the, in those countries, because this kind of payment in a global way is not existent. So the interventions, uh, we are paying the water on a global basis, but it is a water that it is paid by very few people in a quantitative way, but there we have got the topic of the supply of the urban supplies. As a piece of advice, and after having intervened in many processes, I would say that we shouldn't, and knowing that we have got a difference of 100 years, I would never ever recommend a massive process of setting up of bodies for the basis in none of these countries. We have to work with pilot accounts with accounts that can be identified and where you can make this. This is an account and it wouldn't be an account in the Spanish sense, not by far. It would be a sub-basin, it would be a micro-basin where we would have a city with a very big urban supplies and we should organize a pilot uh, basin based on a law if possible and most of the waters are waters which are shared with other countries. So this poses a problem of international relationships which is still to be solved between Peru and Ecuador. They are negotiating right now very important treaties that can give you, you have said that you came from the north of Peru, so you are really affected by these treaties which are being negotiated. And this is what I wanted to say, so let's go on. Okay. The things I have taken notes, how do industrial users, industrial hydroelectric users integrate it and other hydroelectric uses. This is regulated in the water. Uh, re regulations and the regulations are really very, very accurate. This is not something which has been improvised. So the hydroelectric, depending on the power that has been installed in the turbines, and the rest of the uses, including the cooling, the thermic cool cooling, and other industrial uses, due to the volume that has been consumed. So it is allocated, depending on these parameters, this number of representatives initially in the exploitation board. And through this, we can reach these user assemblies. And finally, the rest of the bodies of the administrations. And then the use of the dams in the case of the river Ebro, if they are of irrigation or energetic ones. Basically, there are, we shouldn't restrict them. So the company, in a very frequent way, in Spain has been done for the regulation of irrigation. And afterwards, they have been made the most for uh, energetic uses. And in other bases, in the Ebro for the final part, and in the Duero typically, uh, many things have been done and have been funded by energetic users and hydroelectric ones, and after that they have been used for regulating irrigation supply and so on. And I think that there's nothing else. Okay, thank you. Well, in my case, in fact, what Antonio has just mentioned, what I wanted to convey somehow is the situation that we have got here Hydrologically, this situation was not the same 100 years ago, of course not. Let's not forget that we are a country where the Romans came, Arabic people came, they left the culture of irrigation. There are concessions of the king and queens done for 1,000 years. We have got in this Mediterranean bow some millenary concessions or grants, but in 100 years we have been able to have what we have. Let's see. When we are talking about rights, such as Peru or census or whatever, registrations, one thing leads you to the other. We have to know which is your rights in order afterwards to know who's benefiting from that right and how many people are benefited from this right and to start to make a census and to have them identified, let's say, 
So the people who come this afternoon for this irrigation of the high Aragon, there's an office there which is devoted, mainly devoted to keep this census alive with an engineer, a farming engineer, and an auxiliary person who is still there. So from these 135,000 hectares, there are still other hectares which are not very clear. So what I have to say is that we are finishing with it, and we have got every piece of land and every industrial area. It's identified by satellite and so on, but this is very expensive. But we have to reach this stage. and. Uh, I don't know whether we can say this topic of unity of basin. It's going to be complicated, but then we have to create pilot basins and the basins that can be created. Logically, here, let's say that the biggest systems of irrigation we've got in this Ebro basin are not really irrigating from this main part of the Ebro River, but from their affluence. But what you do in this affluent is also going to affect the mouth and it's going to affect every user downstream. So everyone has to study what it can be done in his or her own country. And we have to, try to tend to have a water law to clarify the rights, to know who are the users and who are enjoying these rights, and to manage, let's say, what it has, what you can. So the basin, sub basin, certain parts of the river, whatever it is. And of course, it is like this. Somebody has asked, specifically Bolivia has asked afterwards, how have we solved the topic of the regions? And we have already solved it. We have already solved it in the last years. And what we are trying now is not to lose this. Okay. So. What I want to tell you is that it is like this. We have got some pressures in order to break this, so we have been dependent on the basin unit and so on. I have been in the in the Po, in the Po River, and there it happened something similar to the things that had been said yesterday. Uh, the people at the front part have got the right, and people on the other part can. So this is a river in Italy. It's a country which is there. And with the due respect and my respect to Italy, we cannot use in Italy the qualification of indigenous people. This is another thing. Italy is another thing. But even so, even so, in the Paul River, the circumstance has been existing that we had got these hydroelectric reservoirs at the front totally full in order to be able to produce with a bigger jump in it. And we have had problems not only of irrigation at the mouth of the Po, but also environmental problems then. And of course, the region that uh, is interested that really hydroelectrical power is in the region, and of course it's being charged in the region, has to produce as much energy as possible. <coughs> but in uh, the fact that in a situation of drought, the uh, High waters are, dams are full. This happens when this is uh, administered. The fees, the issue of the fees. It is true that here, well, this is very long to, to be explained. This is very long. And I would say that I am available for everybody who would like to know this more in detail. Now we have a coffee break, so maybe you can take the chance. But it is very clear that everybody pays, and everybody pays its, its price, their price. Well, we, there are some coefficients that are marked by the water direction, and the supply is paid according to an estimated benefit. And uh, we agree a higher benefit in uh, the supply than in the industries, for example. So therefore, there is a kind of scaling up, a scale of uh, um, payments, but everybody pays. Uh, on the one hand, we pay for the consumption, and on the one hand, the other hand, we pay for the um, facilities and the connection. As for our area, we are not having an important scarcity of water, but we are using the within the perimeter 
of our irrigation area, the, uh, in the irrigation returns. We try to use these returns before they go out of the irrigation system. If we speak about the Mediterranean arch, maybe we will, or the Mediterranean countries, we will find uh, in Castellón, well, in the areas of the Mediterranean, in Castellón, in the Mediterranean, um, they don't reuse this uh, water of the irrigation, uh, or the irrigation water. They just um, throw, out, throw away the, the, the water. Uh, what do we obtain from the state? Well, when we are talking about works of millions of euros, such as, for example, the construction of a canal, the state makes the work, is in charge of building up the work, and then it recovers the costs later on. What do we obtain from the state? The fact that it is funding, fi financing some works for us, paying them for us, and then later on uh, they will um, ask for the payment, the return payment of these works in, long, in a long term, and we will be able to pay these costs. I don't know if I have answered all the uh, questions, but anyway, as we have the coffee break, uh, you can approach me in the coffee break. Uh, well, I would say to the representative of Peru that uh, as for fees or as for the poll system, the voting system, it is uh, the one who puts more stakes is the one who uh, gets more benefits. Uh, Marta Barrera here can illustrate, can enlighten you uh, on everything about the basing uh, bodies. As for the um, Peruvian basins, I have visited Catamayo, Chile from up to down, headwaters to down to downwaters or downstream. What does uh, happen? The people uh, purifies water, no. People who treats water, no. You have to have a very clear idea. What do you want and what do you need for it? And everybody has to work for it. Everybody is involved and everybody has to make their best, their utmost to achieve their goals. Uh, the um, Water Authority is to solve uh, these conflicts that may appear, but you have to be independent, that's clear. Do you plan on a short term or on a long term? Well. Uh, as for the water management, on a short term, you can take measures, you can act, make actions, but the water management has to be done with a long-term perspective, even a century as a perspective. The Americans, in order to amortize, to get a return of uh, the dam works, are talking about 200 years or 300 years. These social commitments have to be on a very long term. We have spoken about the regionalisms and nationalisms of uh, commented by Bolivia. Well, it is clear here. I, if the basin authority cannot have a decision and take power from headwaters to downwaters, from head to toe, let's say, from the uh, beginning of the river to the end, then it will not have uh, really it will be useless. They are, they, in many cases, in many parts of the world, there are basin authorities, but they meet to solve nothing, really. This, is, this will be useless if they don't have power from upstream to downstream. Okay, the use of water for agriculture is important. We don't have uh, many problems here, but uh, we are making projects in reuse of water for agriculture not only for the use of water and to uh, get more added value, but 
in order to remove the pollution from the rivers. We reuse water in order to remove pollution. In many cases, like in the case of the Ebro River, in order to remove some nutrients from the river. We have to reuse this water rather than uh, we, we reuse the water in order to remove these nutrients rather than to um, create added value. Well, uh, answering to Saudi Arabia, there is only one way to manage water. We have a similar problem to your problem in the Mediterranean areas. If we had users communities, the new extractions will not be produced. And when we have polluters, it is the users who would avoid the overexploitation or the pollution of the water courses. There are solutions. Unfortunately, on that, we, the basin authorities, are newborns. Because there was a time where the state managed the underground water. It was a failure. And now, with the 1985 Water Act uh, delivering the power or giving the power to the basin authorities, now we have uh, improved this, the situation. Well, to the rest of the questions, I can answer you during the coffee break. You have a lot of, uh, I, I, this goes to Egypt. Uh, you have contact with the Ebro River Delta. Um, experts they are sitting behind you so egypt you can speak to these people who are sitting behind you they can enlighten you they can illustrate well as for guatemala we have spoken about the uh, basin councils uh, this goes also like uh, to peru we cannot do anything without precise commitments if you don't irrigate and you don't reduce uh, the impoverishment, uh, the basin authority will be useless. If you don't uh, preserve the environment, there is no use for the basin authorities. We are open to tell you not what you have to do, but to tell you uh, the experiences, the bad experiences that we had in the past. As for Madagascar, the uh, participatory risk management and the participation of the government. Well, the government uh, cannot really elude their responsibilities in spite of the uh, existing, the um, basin authorities existing there. I mean, the state has to put money, has to fund. Uh, maybe they can get a return uh, via the fees or via bonuses or returns, no matter how. But the state has to intervene in the water management. But we say that one euro spent in collaboration with the users and the civil society is a euro or a dollar that has better spent that if it is the state directly uh, who spends this dollar or this euro with their civil servants, or with its civil servants. Andres de Lucas wanted to say, uh, just to answer the Kenyan question, the planning that you were telling us. Well, in Spain, we make uh, water planning by basins according to national rules. We respect uh, the uh, hydrological plan instruction and the government rules, the state rules. And then these actions are passed by the royal decree. And then all the water plans of the different basins of the nation are passed. Finally, once they are all approved or passed, we put together all these basin uh, plans and mm, by law, there is uh, one general plan that is approved by law. Considering all the small uh, basin plans, I mean, we make an ensemble of all of them. Thank you very much.
I know that uh, in the room there are many more professionals of these aspects that in this afternoon's trip or during the coffee breaks they can uh, have a contact, a very interesting contact. Thank you very much. We make a brief coffee break and then we will continue. Thank you. This is the, the last panel of the conference. I know we are all tired. Okay? Este es el último panel de la conferencia. Veo que hay muchos que no tienen los auriculares. Así que... Y... Um, use your headphones. I am going to make the moderation in Spanish because the three panelists are Spanish and therefore dialogue is easier. I apologize for those of you not speaking English, uh, Spanish, I mean. But I think it will be <clears throat> easier. Well, we are having to, we are going to speak about other experiences of cooperation that in this case are both on an international level uh, or at an international level, which uh, this is one of the most important uh, cooperation people. They are very modest, but it is very important what they are doing. And then we are going to listen to two experiences, very interesting ones, one related with funding. Yesterday we were talking about the importance of uh, funding and cooperation. In, the, in this case we are going to speak about a solidary uh, funding mechanism. And we will have also the pleasure to have women on the panel. All the participants were saying to me, what happens with women in uh, Spanish water management? They are in the second row, but they are there, of course. And in this case, we have the pleasure to have Eva Garcia. I know her for many years. She's one of the persons that has most promoted public participation in Spain. And she comes from a pioneering region, pioneering in public participation, especially in water issues in this case. She comes from Navarre and I think this experience, the experience of Navarre is very special. You have to take it, we have to take it into account, certainly. Thank you, Eva, for coming here to share your experiences. Well, the format again is a bit different difficult maybe uh, you remember that Rudolf was uh, making a, like a mix of introductions but in this case we have asked them the panelists uh, within every of the cases that you are going to present what is what works better and what is what you think works worse or what should be improved what do you think uh, this is very UN <laughs> if you may say so. We are going to start with Mr. Alfredo Cajal, who is the director of the Aragon Water Institute, and therefore he has the regional responsibilities of water management. And today we have heard about the issues of the regional role of all organizations within the basin, and this is something that I would like to ask the panelists. But in principle, Alfredo, what do you think works better in relation with this um, financing mechanism or funding mechanism that you have in Aragon for water treatment plants? Thank you very much, Josefina. On behalf of, on my behalf, and on behalf of the water, the Aragon Water Institute, I want to thank you for inviting me, and I want to also thank those who have come from abroad for sharing these days with us and for being curious about our land. It is a very nice city, this uh, Zaragoza. And uh, just to speak about any issue of water in Aragon, we have to establish a context, which is the context of our land. It is very difficult to know uh, how we handle water management if we don't know our land. 
Okay, we have a surface of 47,000 uh, square kilometers. Uh, we have a population of 1,300,000 inhabitants. You can see that this is a complex situation because the distribution is very unequal, very different to other places. We have a big uh, urban center, which is Zaragoza, and the rest of them are very small uh, populations. We have 1,543 uh, uh, municipalities. Um, nuclei of population or urban, little urban areas, but we have 731 municipalities. So you can imagine, you can see that the population is very much um, concentrated in the city of Zaragoza. In this city, we have around 700,000 inhabitants out of this million 300 in total inhabitants of Aragon. Uh, this poses a lot of problems in terms of um, distribution of services, among which water is an important service, of course. And we build the supply, we build water treatment plants. We have done this in the past, but we still have a lot, a lot of work to do. But in the past, we looked for a formula, and the best formula in order to comply with uh, community directives was through the, the public-private collaboration. We were defining the areas to be treated. We uh, also um, were giving tenders, and one company won. And so, along 20 years, the uh, government of Aragon would pay uh, to this company all the costs. But Josefina was asking me what has worked well. In, to answer this, I would like to say that we work very well, pretty well, but uh, up to the moment of the crisis. When the crisis arrived, the situation was different. The companies that had to spend some money in order to, make, to, to, to build up these works had a lot of difficulties in order to get economic support on the credit bodies. And we are now having a lot of problems on the part of the companies, not on the part of the Aragon Water Institute. We are working on the redesign of these works instead of um, um, awarding uh, these very big uh, packages of works we are thinking of changing the system. We are starting to award or to allocate uh, smaller works, smaller size works. And now we are tendering or inviting tenders for smaller works. Now we are managing 188 water treatment plants in Oregon, and we are funding everything. How? It is very simple. Josefina was mentioning it. And she was making a reference to solidarity. We can define this solidarity as territorial solidarity. It is very difficult for a population of 500 inhabitants, uh, 1,000 equivalent, can build their dam, their water treatment plant, exploit it or execute it, and make it work every day. As this was not possible, the Aragon Water Institute assumed took on this commitment, or this compromise in this case, and we have done something that was almost uh, compulsory. That is, under the principle of those who pollute pay, there, was, there were bigger or higher levies, level, uh, higher taxes on the citizens. In 1997, the government of Aragon established a tax. I want to say that this is a tax, not a levy. A tax an environmental and autonomic tax that was uh, on the wastewater production. Everybody produces wastewater, and therefore everybody has to pay this tax. In addition, the tax was affected, which means that all the money that was uh, collected through this tax 
would be devoted to the treatment, the wastewater treatment. No matter, any citizen of Aragon will pay the same per uh, cubic meter. There is nothing more solidarity uh, that is, shows more solidarity than this. In the end, we all pollute, and therefore we have to pay all of us the same. And this is the reality. This is what has been working better, or best. There is no Aragon citizen that pays more per cubic meter, and this is achieved through this tax that is devoted to these resources and therefore to water treatment. Of course, there are some difficulties. We have encountered difficulties because at the moment of paying, nobody likes to pay and everybody thinks that it is unfair what is being done to them. But we have uh, run a awareness raising campaign so that the citizens will see that without this solidarity, it is impossible that Aragon will fulfill or comply with the uh, Water Framework Directive and the regulations from Europe. Without this uh, method, I can guarantee that it's going to be impossible. And why is it impossible? Because there would be such a huge difference between the things, between the amount that the Aragon citizens would have to pay depending on where they live. That, for instance, for those living in places with a very low registration of inhabitants, it would be impossible. So a person of Zaragoza is paying right now, would be paying around 120 euros per year. If we go to a little village of 100 inhabitants, they would pay between eight and nine times more per housing. So a typical flat or house made up by three members, they would be paying more. So it is understood that unless we had, and, and if we didn't have this solidarity, this couldn't work out really. And I'm insisting on something I've already remarked. I think that to treat the wastewater to have uh, the river in the best condition ever. It is not an exclusive responsibility of the people living beside the river. It is a responsibility for all of us, and all of us have to contribute because it is our common responsibility. This is what we do in Aragon. If somebody wants us to explain in more detail all these issues. Okay, Alfredo, thank you very much indeed. Only one question then. You've been, you've been saying that you are making a raising, a raising awareness campaign here in Zaragoza because you thought this kind of campaign is something that really works here. People want to know, to be communicated. What are you doing then, really? Well, we are doing... We are joining this to the same raising of awareness of the sustainable and reasonable use of water. We are working, and I think we've been quite successful, especially on an age that we are very concerned, so the with certain aging people who are with all the children. The, we are working at the schools, and we are uh, visiting the we are visiting the schools. We are giving them talks and explanations. We are working with them. I think that it is more difficult with the older people because there are routines that uh, are really set up in people and they are very difficult to give up. But in childhood, for the children, the results are very good. And then we have had very fine experiences with very young people, very young boys or girls, and it is really astonishing. And regarding the things that they are demanding from their own parents in respect of the behavior of this use of water, both in the supply of drinkable water and also in the treatment. So this is a work that we have started f some, for some time. And I think it should be extended because in those uh, ages when people are being brought up is when we can be very successful. It is much more difficult when people are older. I'm very sorry. Yeah, okay. No. Unfortunately, we cannot listen. We cannot listen to, to Josefina. Yes, now it is. And this is a very good model of interinstitutional cooperation between this uh, education councillor office and the one of the environment. Yeah, because uh, the treatment is uh, the treatment of water is dealt by another institution and we were with them with a joint agreement in order to achieve uh, 
the objective we've mentioned, so both for the supply and also for the treatment. We are working with every town hall because they are the ones responsible for this. And in order to achieve the stage we are today, we have had to understand agreements with every town hall where they give us the competence about this Water Institute because the competence belongs to them. So thank you very much indeed. And before this uh, question, the, the round of questions, we are going to give the floor to Adriano García Loigorri. He's the boss of the Department of the Fund of Water in Spain. And uh, the projects that uh, have been financed on behalf of the SS, what I have asked him is to tell us really how they are fostering through this funding of the fund, the participative uh, processes in the projects they are funding. So please, we are talking about funding, about cooperation processes and so on. Okay, Josefina. I'm glad to be here in Zaragoza and in this building and a seat and as I am, um, I have been a member of the Federation of the Tajo. I cannot uh, help but uh, supporting what uh, the other the other representative has said just now. How well these confederations are working, and I say this because I have been responsible in a great part of the Tieta River, and uh, I had got a, f a firm, a company which uh, had one foot in Castilla-La Mancha and the other one in Leon Castilla, and. Uh, of course, this river goes through Madrid and then it is irrigating Castilla-La Mancha too. This has been very well managed by myself, by the whole, by the whole team. So in the seasons of uh, drought, uh, together with the irrigation experts and so on, and for instance, in the hydropower stations with the experts in electricity, everything has been co-managed with all the people, with all the experts participating in that. So this model of federations, I think, really works. And I would like to explain in a very somewhat way what the fund is, because perhaps some people do not know about it. It was a promise of the year 2007, which consisted of 1,500 million of dollars, which were going to be invested in Latin America too. And uh, this was translated at the end in an office in order to manage this, uh, this fund for treatment and sanitization. And then uh, in the year 2009, we sanctioned, we approved the funding of 600 million euros for Latin America. And when it's something that it is not working, I'm going to mention this point again. Until now, 800, euros, 800 million euros have been spent. Most of them have been managed with this Inter-American Development Bank. And why? did we have this fund for this uh, treatment of water? We have thought, must we concentrate ourselves? We have always thought that the cooperation is most useful when we concentrate ourselves at the same geographical area, and international experts say that, and they are very right too. So we have reflected about it. What should Spain be concentrating on? Which is the advantage they have? Well, Spain, due to the Spanish weather, we have got a mainland which is quite dry in the south, uh, and very humid in the north, and also with uh, rainfall, which is concentrated on several seasons. So, for instance, uh, in winter, in summer, it doesn't rain. Roman people and many others, the Arabs, have come here with their own infrastructures. The oldest institution of Europe, not of justice, but uh, not of water justice, but of justice, is this uh, water court in Valencia, which still meet every week once in order to uh, decide on the problems of the irrigation uh, experts. And of course, we have to discuss too the problems of this Euro confederation, and Spain has got a very long experience in this water management, which is, according to my view, one of the most important problems being dealt with in Latin America, so the management and planning of it. On the other hand, as cooperation agency, we have got offices in every country of Latin America. And obviously, the culture, the language, really makes us be much closer to the, um, to the American continent than to other ones. So we concentrate in a sectorial way and geographically our task. And a very important thing is the procession that the Spanish citizens have got of water. And due to all these reasons, I leave all these things uh, really in a very close way. All of us have got floods and roads. And the Spanish population, as far as I know, when we are criticizing cooperation, I have never seen any crits any critics to devote, uh, to allocate funds for the water and its treatment. All of us think it's necessary and we support it. So at the end, what we want to, at the, in the end of the day, what we want is that this fund 
for the next years will be the symbol of cooperation with Latin America. What has uh, functioned in a wrong way from my point of view? Well, okay, miscellaneous. Let's go and offer some miscellaneous comments. First of all, talking about the fund, we're going to talk about the problems we have had. We are still ready to to have an structure. We have never had a big program in infrastructure. There were in procedures, and there were procedures for NGOs and for cooperations from other scope. So. It is very important in these water projects, the, the issue of sustainability. In Spain, some treatment plants do not work out or because they have been badly preserved or whatever, they have been badly maintained. So something very important for us is that the Spanish citizen, which has contributed with money for cooperation, this money should be well employed. And of course, we don't want to use it in pipelines which lead nowhere or in treatment plans which are not working. So there were some demands on the users and we must also, we have to do some pedagogy in our own agency. When they see that the projects the next year, still we do not have water, of course not, because the project, as you know, needs an infrastructure. First of all, there's a planning, then there must be an executive unit which has to do this uh, tendering uh, notebooks and also to check the designs and also to start somewhere. So we had to do some pedagogy because uh, things uh, were thought to be much quicker and it is not. And I have experienced also in Spain that a shock plan of the irrigation really lasts, really takes a long time to, to be implemented. So, and this has worked quite well. People have had to, to get adapted to it. At the end, in the agency, we have had a sectorial plan focused on three axes in the hydric resources, in the, govern, in the governability, and also we have got the support of the state with 17 experts in field that we didn't have before. And we have made an alliance with the BIF that has helped us very much at the very beginning because they have had an experience of 50 years with water treatment, something very valuable for our projects. And we have had also a management order with the technical public entity, which is the FedEx in planning in planning matters. So how do we work with this participatory management? This is what I wanted to say. We work in the urban, we were in the urban areas. In the peri-urban areas, the useful management is in the hands of the water firm of the city, sometimes public, sometimes private. And sometimes you have to reinforce it because it doesn't work so well. But there is at least a body in order to manage it. But a very important management is the rural areas. And in Latin America, more than 40 million people are supplied by the so-called communitary water board. What is it really, this communitary board, from the point of view of Spain? A very small country compared with the American ones, and very densely populated per square kilometer compared to Latin America. The situation is very different. In Latin America, for instance, in the Peruvian Amazony, the communities are far away one from the other. And uh, the thing is that the 100 families of a community, well, we have to make a work for them, a plant, and they are the ones, those families are the ones, the inhabitants, the ones who have to maintain it. And sometimes when the community hasn't participated in the decision, the things has not uh, worked out because the families, the inhabitants must participate in the decision from the very beginning to know what they, in order for us to know what they want to in the construction, in the building, and of course in the management. So there's a very wide experience in Latin America and the focus of these water boards is very, very old because in the 80s, 90s, so what we are seeing now is that these water boards, when they are left alone, they really fail. And the infrastructure that was well done, at the end, uh, some of the items are broken, the valves are broken, or there is a hurricane. Or when, there, when a major, a major reparation has to be done, things that do not work, you have really to monitor it, to follow it up constantly. There must be an entity, an authority. It can be a municipality, a community, in order for this to work. And we are working on that. And for instance, talking about Guatemala, I think that Professor Embiv is really a very wise man. 
I wouldn't say I wouldn't say the opposite. I would never ever say the opposite. But I think that we are always thinking. When we are talking about bases in the macro bases, such as Amazonian, in the Amazonian one, and the experience in Guatemala tells us that we can do things well in small basins. The Spanish cooperation is working, has been working for a long time in communities. And apart from this, making up a community is a way of thinking. So the one who is charging upstream is really harming the person who is downstream. So if we reinforce the front, it's something beneficial for all of us. This is working in Guatemala. We, this is the basin really can work with planning. And for instance, in Guatemala, we have had the involvement of many communities, and we have to take into account the sources or the springs in order to supply every community. This regarding whether one source is very close to a community or not. So the system is working. I'm not so pessimist that uh, I can think that it cannot be implemented at a low level. At a high level, those are things that are beyond my field of action. And there are many more people who know much more than I do. But I would really be very optimistic because this is something which has a typical feature of the Spanish cooperation. We are also working with communities in Honduras. And we think this is a very good system for the sustainability of the infrastructures. I would like to say more things about water and anecdote. I cannot help mentioning water. Not only is health, this is something quite obvious, and it's self-explanatory, but uh, it is productivity in order to remove disease so that people can work more. It is gender, so that they the girls, the the, the, chil the the girls, the female children are the ones who are always taking the water from the source, and this is education. And I would like to talk about an anecdote talking about women. Josefina said, "Human community, I have visited in El Salvador, where it was made up by men, and the president, the chairwoman, was a woman. The woman was about 30. She was a real leader, an impressive woman. Really, I admire her." So in her home, apart from leaders, she was also the she was also in charge of the money of the cash, and she had put a poster: "Please make your pay the first uh, the first Monday every every month." Uh, so it was really um, these sentences were written with mistakes. But this woman was a real leader, and if this woman had had the opportunity to study, uh, we she would have been boof. She had had such a great potential, and this woman could have done much, much more had she had the uh, right uh, education. And we have to reinforce this. We have got the indicator of gender in many, many projects. And we launched the fact that in the governing bodies of the community boards, there must be women. We have got an indicator. We think it is good. We think it is necessary. We haven't published this yet. But of course, we also have got a value of gender in order to focus of in order to focus on that, uh, this is very, very important in a, in a water board because women are the ones who know what are better. They are in charge of children. They wash the children with it. And depending on the community, sometimes it's very convenient to talk with them alone, isolated. This point of view is very, very important, and we don't want to leave it behind. More things. What have we done wrong? Something, well. One thing, and we have learned the lesson now, we cannot, we cannot really talk about 600 million euros in one year. This was quite a lot of money. We made, we talk about this mistake, and from that moment onwards, the budget has been much, much less. But with all these things, I think that at the end, and uh, we're starting right now with the execution stage. We are making works in many, many places. And this is now when we are going to see the result of these projects and of all these procedures we have prepared for the sustainability. Of course, this viability research is, must be there too. And at the end, within the contributors, we have to use everything in the best way for having water and sanitation. That's it. Thank you very much indeed. For sure, you are going to receive quite a lot of questions, but we are going to leave it there. 
Eva, you are going to tell us the, particip the participatory processes uh, in Navarre. What has it functioned and what hasn't it functioned? No, don't be afraid. I'm going to to play to the rule and I'm going to do a short presentation, even though I can do it in a very general way. But as I hope that many questions can be posed afterwards, we have the occasion to know what it works and what it doesn't. First of all, to tell you that I come from an organization which is the Center of Environmental Resource, Resources. It is an institution linked to the general direction of water and environment. And we are an entity, which is an intermediate one, where our main function or our main mission is the sensitization, the training in topics of uh, environment. And we have served as a support from the year 2006 to all these participatory processes in the water. I want to show the map, just showing the map, because many of you do not know really this action. Within the Ibero Valley, we are very disseminated, so that you can see that within our possibilities, we have got enough rivers, and the effort that has been made uh, of these autonomous communities, the effort made by the autonomous community of Navarre in order to try to go forward in this idea of the processes and a more open participation has been something really important and fundamental despite of being in a small region and this really makes us have a situation of uh, being able to launch pilot experiences. And without any further ado, I'm going to start with the presentation These are, as I've told you, pilot experiences, and very often they are useful for us. So we can learn from them. So what I'm going to pose to you is eight challenges, eight challenges where we have uh, thought that it was really essential to think of this way of learning for new processes of active participation. I'm talking about the active participation of this morning, so the biggest involvement for the citizens. These eight challenges would start to define the scale. We have seen how the basins are organized. We are a small region, we have got a lot of rivers, and at the level of sub-basin, we are really very diverse. So, which scale should we take? For the first moment, we took this one, the level of sub-basin, we had a very valuable experience, and from that moment, we started to a scale of a very wide uh, a scope or a scale. This is the innovative experience I want to present to you. Why? Because in the reverse, very often, we act uh, like with a, with a temporary solution, which is set for at uh, local level in the municipalities and then when we have got a crisis or a conflict. So this idea of making a reflection at the level of a, of a certain path about the topics of three directives at the same time. We are especially worried about this directive of flood, but we also have got uh, a directive of this water framework with a good ecological state. So what are the actions that we do that can protect the population, that can reduce our risks of flood, but that can be respectful also with the environment? And the answers until now have been really just uh, very temporary. So this is the need of joining a certain part, so for instance, the lower ones of the Arga and Aragon River with the same problems and with a very important influence so that they can be known and we can, be talk we can talk about it. And the Habitat Directive is the oldest one and we have got here some of the spices in danger of extinction at the European level, which is the European, uh, I don't know the name, this is the challenge and we have really to define the framework where we have to do this discussion and this open participation. We have to avoid to talk just for talking. So we have to focus that in a very honest way. And something very important that has been said this morning, we are not starting to talk with a document, but in a parallel way to the technical work. We have to start to work really at the technical level with the new technologies and to know which was the real risk 
situation, the ecological one, which was the problematic. And historically, we have started with some uh, uh, channelings and so on. But really, there was this idea that uh, a narrow cooperation is necessary between the technical work and the participatory work. So otherwise, we are going to talk about consultancy, consultations at the end, and this is what we want to avoid, to start and to talk in a joint way, and that the richness of these debates can also enrich the technical works, and also with a new way of doing things, which is the following challenge that we have thought of. When you open this participation to the whole citizens, to all those who are interested on it, you are posing or you are thinking of a new way of working within the administration and out. So this technocracy we have mentioned before and of very participatory forms. Where can we, what can we reach? And we have seen this and it has worked. And I say this within the administration because one of the keys was really, according to me, how the local authorities were involved in this participation. So therefore, this process had been previously been worked on and it was a decision of starting both of the authority of the region and also of the other local authorities. A new way, a new way to relate uh, among the agents we are accustomed, we the users are accustomed to uh, uh, go to the uh, basin authority and speak aloud. Here we have been very strict trying uh, to make that the, all the different typologies and all the uh, types of ideas are present. We have made an effort in trying to gather people, to bring people uh, together and bring them in these debates. Both the hydroelectrical sector, the agrarian sector, groups of women, groups of all types uh, coming in an equal situation to have an opportunity to get to know the data and transparent information to get to know the problems to see if we agreed upon them or not in the territory there are many aspects and there are many experts that know a lot of no that have a lot of knowledge there is a fabulous enrichment um, on the another challenge how this participation and large participation uh, well this is not talking by talking no we have to talk in a very clear way to see how we organize ourselves not everybody will want to Im get involved in the same way Therefore, we have to define some participation levels where uh, we give them the opportunity the option to be informed, well informed, to come to meetings and other more reduced groups of 20, 25 people maximum, they should come and they should um, understand the question from the beginning and the whole question, the whole issue, I mean. Uh, what do we achieve by this? Well, we achieve the fact that there is a social learning process, that there will be a deliberatory participatory process. These groups are not decision groups. They are support to decision, groups of support to decision. But everybody should know the framework they are working on and or working in and the uh, rules of the game. There is a learning and a recognition of the agents in the territory, and this is very important. I have come here with Gloria Mendivil, who has come here accompanying me because she has participated. If anybody wants to ask her about her experience, she's a woman, one of the few women who come here to this participatory process, and she can tell you her experience. And she has been following all the uh, participation in water issues through other uh, prons pr programs. Another challenge that we face when uh, speaking about active participation. We have to be flexible. These issues are a bit complicated. You start dealing with them and then you encounter all sorts of problems. The way we organize and the way 
yeah, we organize this participation has to be flexible, uh, both to the demands of the technicians, the social demands. There are people who get interested and they request you more meetings to be able to work. And also we have to attend to the political needs. It is the politicians who have to decide and there is a program, there is an agenda, etc. <clears throat> As for the organization levels, I was saying the political level is not uh, the decision-making level, but there is a continuous political accompaniment of the decision-making process along the whole process. <coughs> the mayors of these six municipalities form the follow-up commission and they were having a continuous feedback with all the works that were carried out and even they were present in many of the meetings uh, just by listening without participating but this allowed uh, them to make a final decision that was much better informed in fact as I said, we have to be flexible, but we also have to say up to when are we going to be flexible. It cannot be an eternal participation. It is true that new issues emerge, but we have to be able to say, okay, uh, we have complied with the goals up to here, and from now on we will speak of a second phase, for example. We have to get some useful results and outcomes for the decision that mark a before and an after moment. And also, to, we have to leave information useful for the following phases. And the next phase, the final phase. And then, when everybody is enthusiastic about the project, when everybody knows, understands what the project is about, when everybody knows about the quality, what is quality, everybody knows the actions that uh, are more acceptable, socially acceptable, when we have made also the uh, environmental, economical, and, ec and social assessments, and then well, we are there at that moment. We are trying to um, change our scale, a new goal, a new scale, to define new uh, specific projects, where we have had a lot of conditions and restricting um, issues that are giving a precarity to these processes. Poli political changes, governmental elections, municipal elections, all these are hindering, are barriers that are hindering uh, these projects. Also the economic crisis, of course. These are different aspects and we have to include them so that this precariousness um, that we are generating and this work that we are generating will be kept a long time. Thank you very much. You haven't, you haven't told us what didn't work, because the challenges look li more like um, lessons learned. If you had been able to do things differently, what would have you have changed? Well, just an example. The flexibility that I was talking about requires technical and economic uh, resources, and we have been suffering from this lack of resources. You're always uh, having to ask, you, you always have to ask for everything, um, technically. We have had problems. We were talking this morning about the civil society, we were saying that it is not uh, well totally organized. These fora allow you to open this uh, society without representation, but to organize so that the civil society sees the need to organize themselves. For example, the farmers. 
You have the presentation, and I suppose the organization will be able to give it to you. Uh, it is difficult to get this, to obtain this balance among different uh, opinions. Uh, the micro is failing. Okay. Um, Josefina said, I want to listen what you have made different. Okay. For example, we have been making a very good call to the people. The issue of the uh, river improvement and the projects were complicated. The people in the small villages, we are we are afraid of the river. We really fear the river. In my village, we live in between the mountain and the river. It is a, can, a village of 2,700 inhabitants. And you live with fear. Before, there were no actions. Uh, they were putting some dikes, some canals. Maybe they should have done these things differently. But it was in the 80s, and at that moment, Maybe they should have think, thought differently. Now we have to go backwards in order to improve the river. It is true that the river needs its fluvial space. It needs its space because it's like a living being. And it needs to be protected. It is true that they are concerned about fluvial improvement or river improvement, but we need to be protected. We, the people, need to be protected from floods and from all kinds of episodes. Well, I would like to make to ask, to prompt the participants to make questions, to ask their questions. I mean, good uh, morning. My day, my name is Santiago Giron. <coughs> Hi was uh, feeling more identified now because uh, the issues that we have, the reality that we have in Guatemala, I come from Guatemala, is very similar to your reality, uh, especially the, what Adriano was saying. And I would like to know, to get to know more about the uh, support mechanisms that you carry out in the uh, Chorti community. We have just finished a food security project and we still think on the follow-up but i'd like to know to get to know a little bit more on this uh, to learn something from this follow-up proce procedure okay i'm going to ask for different questions antonieta you want to say something thank you Thank you very much to the three speakers because they are giving us uh, new perspectives. As for funding, for every funding there are some requirements demanded. What is the main uh, requirement of the co-participation so that you can get the funding? The other thing, uh, I don't know if I understood well uh, Eva's words. You said that sometimes it is the lack of recognition to the personal efforts. In some ways, you think, you feel that your voice is not heard. This happens to us as well. But how are you really overcoming this program? How are you succeeding in the, uh, the fact that the decision makers really hear your voice. In our case, we have to look for alternative strategies to, to achieve this. There's another question on the part of Bolivia. And I think uh, Adriano has to take a train, to catch a train at uh, 5 to 2. Well. We, in the process for uh, institutionalization of these uh, management uh, processes, we are confused because we've heard about uh, the management organizations or bodies related to water. But I hear that you are touching upon issues related to water, but not really dealing with water, like biodiversity, environment, etc. 
how do you relate water with institutions that do not have really problems uh, di derived directly from water? Adriano, would you like to start answering these questions? Yes. Guatemala, I think, is a place where um, they are doing it very well in Guatemala. We have the money already in Guatemala. It is at the availability of the communities. They are the protagonists, the main roles, the main characters of these projects. We also have the support of the Center of Hydrogeographical Studies, for example, for treatment plants to study better treatment alternatives. This uh, institution has made a manual, a guide with the state of the art in the low cost treatment plants. Why? Because in Spain, the sanitation of big cities, large cities, is already uh, implemented. But for smaller cities, it is still uh, under construction, let's say, or under def defining definition. And uh, therefore, this manual, this guide, is very useful and could be useful for Guatemala. In Guatemala, there are communities, small communities around basins, river basins. And of course, there are also problems on the part of the services provided, as they are relatively weak communities because they are far from the capital, some of them. Uh, they are grouped together in order to make uh, common studies, and I think this project is working successfully. But as for support, we can support in the matter of uh, planning, uh, and of course, if the money of the project, the community decides to use it uh, for X or Y purpose, they can use it as long as the other partners uh, agree on this use. Well, what are our co-funding needs? We have some minimal, minimum co-funding requirements according to the country and according to the royal decree as well. In uh, Bolivia, Honduras, Nicaragua, and IT, uh, which are countries that have a high debt uh, the confidence is trust, uh, the trust is zero, I mean. And in uh, relatively rich countries of Latin America, this ratio is 50-50. Uh, Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay, Costa Rica, Panama, Mexico, Cuba. In these only 50%, but we just can devote 15% of the project to these countries. Or the middle countries, uh, we can dedicate it at a ratio of 20 to 80. We can, we have 800 millions in projects. I suppose he refers to million euros uh, in countries that tend not to be sustainable. So we are really devoting efforts to make them sustainable, to turn them uh, into sustainable projects, always compile, complying with all the sustainability conditions. It is true. Water is not only drinking water. It has many more implications. Our point of view as an agency is that all our actions are sustainable from the environmental point of view. But we have many problems in many countries where the water is divided between Ministry of Health, Ministry of the Environment, Ministry of Public Works, private managers, uh, municipal institutions, etc. There is such a dispersion, dispersion in Latin America that is very difficult to handle these things. Who does what? It is very complicated. In the projects we try to involve, in those that can affect more than one ministry, we try to involve all the ministries concerned and we try to be facilitators, we try to act as a bridge. But it is very complicated as a doctrine. Sustainability and the environmental point of view is uh, fundamental, is key, essential. 
and because we think that this is the legacy, the in heritage that we are going to give to our sons, our descendants, and therefore, uh, of course, we have to take very much care of it. Well, I would like to hear your vision, Mr. Cajal. Would li you like to comment on this? Well, I think my, the questions were more uh, addressing uh, him, uh, but in Aragon, I have to say that as for supply and the population, it is dealt by us, the Aragon Water Institute. Of course, we have uh, European funds, as I said before, and now it is solidarity, the one I was mentioning, the solidarity of the citizens, the one that has to assume the cost. The experience that we have had so far is a very positive one. We are uh, fairly glad and satisfied and we understand that we are achieving important goals. I want to say that in the last uh, 50 years, uh, Zaragoza was the, last, the first city to treat, to start treating water and last year we spent 66,000 uh, million cubic meters and we have uh, removed tons and tons of organic matter that didn't uh, go to the rivers that we have uh, eliminated from the rivers and didn't go to the rivers this is very efficient and the only thing is which is a remarkable thing i would like to underline is this solidarity among citizens all working towards the purpose, the common goal of improving the quality of our rivers. These are issues that really concern us and affect us all. Can we link this answer to the question of uh, the Bolivian partners, the relationship between the actions of the autonomous community and the protection of the environment and the habitats? How do you take care of this? Well, we have been working for a long time on this direction, in this sense, and our characteristics, our geographical and climatic uh, geo characteristics are not the same as the ones in Bolivia. In Aragon, we have real difficulties to achieve that the whole, wat the whole territory has water because the uh, rainfall is very scarce, very low, and it is true that we have uh, some formulas, the implementation of irrigations especially, that have required important environmental requirements or demands. You have the uh, CEPAS, what we call the CEPAS, which are the uh, special bird protection, and the leads, uh, which are really protected areas where you cannot do anything Adding all this up, 33% of the surface of the autonomous community is a protected area. And, of course, we have to take this into account because we also look forward uh, to taking care of our territory for our children and our offspring, our descendants. Eva, well, I am going to start with... Uh, the answer to how we coordinate. Well, there are competencies in different services, but this is not a problem when you go to the territory. The people of the territory has everything very clear. No, it cannot happen that somebody comes and gives the idea, his idea, and somebody else comes and gives his other idea. No, from the territory, we regarded it as a, an opportunity to reflect globally because the water is uh, structuring the territory and it's a source of life. And for these territories, it was a key element and very easily, easily recognizable that everything was in the same package. It has also been useful for the administration to learn this commission that we were mentioning about, uh, commission to follow up the authorities that have uh, decision-making power, that was one of the big achievements. And I think it was uh, good on the level of administration to be able to speak about common terms. I was at the service of agriculture or at the service of other service. Uh, 
in spite of the fact that you leader or you are a leader in the water service uh, as a whole now public administration and local administrations are uh, included in the same department but they continue with the same problems of course working on the same issues on a territory level when people participate they are absolutely aware of this integration and this complexity as for the main difficulty all this means a conceptual and a cultural change what Gloria was saying uh, out of some actions that were good up to the 70s the typical dragging the typical dikes etc we had to conceive new solutions and uh, for people to enter into these new dynamics took years years and years as Victor was saying this morning, this is not a question of I start today and I finish tomorrow. No, you have to devote time. And you must never forget the goal of these processes. These decisions have to be understood. It has to be understood what has to be done to solve a complexity that is not seen or regarded by just one user, but by an ensemble of users and they are all at the same seated at the same table and this is where we can see the complexity of the intervention and we can see also the complexity by the administration in trying to manage all these in a correct appropriate or adequate way politically speaking for a public interest as for the voice well I would like to be heard, but not. I would not like to be heard only. I would like these processes to be useful so that everybody can be heard, not only me. So that all these issues are valued accordingly and there is an act of decision related to these issues, but this should uh, have a continuation in the future because planning some actions is not everything. We have made great efforts in the face of planning and we have the challenge of doing this on how to do all this in the execution and the follow-up phases. Thank you very much, very much. I think we have to give an applause to the panel, to clap the panel because they have made a real important effort. And we are going to close the session and then we will go to have lunch at 2.30, a little bit later. The transports for the field visits are going to take place because we are more or less a quarter of an hour delayed. Well, uh, we have had a contact along the different debates. Now the moment of the closing up has come. And apart from some words, I want to thank uh, the fact that this conference or the decision that this conference has been taking place in the our Ebro River Basin Authority. We are going to uh, count now with the participation of uh, personality here in Aragon, who is the ombudsman. Uh, his, well, in Spanish it is the, called the Justicia de Aragon. It is uh, a literal translation would be the Mr. Justice of Aragon, but um, I can say that he is the ombudsman, more or less. His attributions are th those of an ombudsman. And therefore, he has been an um, his uh, actions have been very important from a social, a political, and a cultural point of view. And I consider it important that he could be here to close the session. Well, I wanted to thank Josefina Maes too and the uh, 
Ebro River Basin Authority for letting us their facilities to hold this conference. I think the participation has been high. The conclusions will be recapped uh, in the future. They will be published, of course. And I will have, uh, of course, you can have the uh, collaboration of the uh, Basin Authority. I hope that this type of events will be repeated. I uh, put this house at the disposal of such events. And uh, it's very good to have experiences to share in water management. I am proud of the fact that we have been able to hear in detail the um, basin management system, in particularly the Ebro River Basin Management System of Spain. And uh, there are political tensions, social, environmental, technical, tensions, and all of them have to be integrated by virtue of the cooperation, or in the light of cooperation. This is the motto that we want to underline in the International Year of Water Cooperation in planning and in management is fundamental, as well as in international cooperation, uh, which as a result of the different contacts that you've uh, had during these days, I think will be very fruitful with the Ebro River Basin Authority. I am going to give the floor to the Ombudsman, to Mr. Justicia of Aragon, and finally the balance or the summary by Josefina. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, dear Javier. For those of you coming from abroad, I represent an institution which is 1,000 years of age, 1,000 years old. Of course, it is the, we say that in Aragon we had justicias or ombudsmen before kings in many of the countries that are now existing. And one of my antecessors, Juan de la Nuza, when Philip II was the most powerful king of the universe, um, he cut the head, he beheaded this Mr. Juan de la Nuza, who was uh, one of the ombudsmen, of the first ombudsman. And, well, uh, my woman has been working here for over 40 years. But I, uh, my father also worked here, but my, my wife would oppose, uh, today she's not here because she would oppose strongly to my being here today speaking to you. Well, I, jokes apart, or jokes aside, I want to say that water is uh, a rich resource, is resource of wealth. But this is many more things. In Aragon, it is a sign of identity in Aragon. Why? Because this is a very arid land, a very desertic land. It is crossed by rivers, it's true, but it is a desert. And in spite of this, people have uh, decided to live here. Why? Because there were water. There are people who do not take a shower every day here but who consider that taking one single drop of water to some other part of Spain or the world really makes them absolutely mad of rage because this is a sentimental feeling, it's a sentimental issue. And we live the water here with such a strength, with such an energy. Every time there has been a proposal to take some one liter of water away, there has been a real, real drama, social drama here with all types of uh, public uh, demonstrations, etc. When there is water, there are new needs. And when you create new needs, uh, well, the water is scarce. I think that a good example of a good management of a scarce resource are the Basin Authorities in general, and very specifically the Ebro River Basin Authority. I come from the world of uh, law. In fact, I, by education, I am 
a uh, district attorney or a public prosecutor, but um, my family comes from the engineering world, and it is really important to say how basing ourselves on the day-by-day -day tradition and use, we have been able to solve conflicts that if were it not for the uh, way we historically have been um, leading these conflicts or solving them, they would have been dramatic. I have seen, as a public prosecutor or a district attorney, I have seen somebody kill another person because they invaded one meter of their land or one meter of their house uh, when building new houses. However, I have never seen anybody trying to kill or wanting to kill anybody for an extra use of water. Why? Because we have a good system to solve conflicts. And we have a very practical sense when solving these issues. And the uh, water commissariat, the uh, Ebro River Basin Authority, and the irrigators communities have been able, have been wise, and have been able to uh, solve conflicts very effectively. I am sure that you, all this model will be very useful for you. I just hope that you had a very pleasant stay in Aragon. This is a uh, hosting land, and we would like to see you again here in our home, in our city. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ombudsman, for your wise words, because they are also wise. I know the way you think, and I consider it very wise. And also, thank you to the president of the uh, Ebro River Basin Authority. I want to thank this institution and Aragon in general, because they have uh, given us a very warm welcome. They have treated us very well. They have made their efforts uh, to make us feel good. And I hope I am speaking also on behalf of all the participants. Everything has been easy. And this is always uh, when there is a lot of work behind. Thank you very much in general. And thank you very much to Manolo, to Eva, to Andres, because you're absolutely uh, at at, uh, aware of all the details. It is a commitment that goes beyond the political changes, all the commitment in, the, in this house. It is not only water management, it is the people who represent it. Uh, and they are the ones who make all these things work every day. I'd like to say that this is a non-typical event for the UN. I suppose, Adolfo, you think uh, the same as I think, Rudolf. These are not uh, normal events. We have a magnificent relationship uh, to the member states on a higher level. There are specific agencies, IFAD, the FAO, the World Bank, that through the projects has a direct relationship with the beneficiaries. But uh, we, the United Nations, as a system, we still have uh, um, to work, we have much to walk ahead. But in this event, we have achieved in bringing together many uh, representatives of different regions of the world. They have shared their experiences, and they were regions with different scales. We have heard about transnational basins, and, as, and they were speaking about uh, these issues are subjects of these corporations, and we have shared these experiences with uh, rural communities, cities, etc. This has been a very important lesson. I think that the rural communities have seen that the uh, nations, the problems of the nations of, uh, to relate among each other are very similar, resemble to their own problems, and we have to understand them in their transnational and basic problems basin scale problems. I thank the Basin Authority very much, and I hope this has been useful for all of you to share important lessons. I also thank the delegations that are here for their participation. 
And I wish them a very good trip back home. We have some field visits that are going to take place this afternoon in a more informal way, more relaxed way. I hope that the format of these two and a half days has been dynamic and interesting for you. Thank you very much for your attention and, to, and for resisting up to the very end of the conference. Thank you.